Chapter 1851 Center of Narrow Moon Han Sen was interested in those paintings. He kept looking at them, fascinated by the depiction of rebate being slaves. But in the paintings, Han Sen could not see what beings had enslaved them. The carriage and the slave masters that it held were all enveloped in bright light. So much so, you could not identify the beings inside it. You. Open the door. Captain Wood pointed at one of the barons as he spoke. I'm sorry. That baron suddenly kneeled, planted his face down to the ground, and started to kowtow. He did it so vigorously, his forehead began to bleed. Catcha. Captain Wood cut the baron's head clean off, and emotionlessly spoke to another one of the barons. You. Now you go and open the door. The baron's legs were shaking. He didn't beg as the previous baron had. Instead, he slowly approached the door of the palace. His trembling legs brought him closer and closer to the door, and when he was near enough, he extended his shaky hands. With little to no strength, he pushed against it. The door did not budge. You strength! Captain Wood shouted. The Baron shoved forcefully against the door, but still, there was no response. Deep Blue Viscount, how did Chiron Earl enter? Captain Wood asked Deep Blue Viscount. Deep Blue Viscount ever since he had returned to this place, had looked quite pale. His lips shivered as he tried to speak, saying he merely pushed the door and it opened. He did nothing special. He didn't do anything? Come on, man. Think about it harder, Captain Wood quietly requested. Deep Blue Viscount's entire body was shaking like mad. His facial expression screamed out the fact he was hiding something. And inside, whenever he thought about it, he wanted to faint and drop down to the ground. I guess I do know what happened, Gu Chiching said with a sigh. She used the voice only Han Sen and Xie Qing King could pick up. Han Sen nodded. He knew what she was thinking too, but it was simply too cruel. What's going on? Xie Qing King was too lazy to think about it, so he quietly asked them to spell it out. Gu Chiching said, if I am not mistaken, Chiron Earl brought more than just Deep Blue Viscount. There might have been six ordinary rebate. Xia Qing King did not want to realize what she was suggesting, but he was a smart man. He understood and said, Are you saying Chiron Earl brought the ordinary rebate intentionally for some reason? Their only use could have been in opening this door. Does that mean Deep Blue Viscount is some sort of key or sacrifice? That must be the reason it, Gu Qiqing said coldly. Gu Qiqing knew this, but Captain Wood was not dumb, either. He stared at Deep Blue Viscount and said, If you tell me the truth, I will let you live. If you lie, you are going to be a sacrifice. Deep Blue Viscount's body shook even more now. With a trembling voice, he said, We need the blood of four rebate to open this door. When Deep Blue Viscount said that, the rebate barons were shocked. They immediately tried to run. Aside from them, only Captain Wood and Black Steel were rebate. Everyone knew what would happen to them now. Captain Wood didn't look at the rebate barons that were escaping, though. Four of the Marquis did so for him. They swiftly moved to grab the escaping barons. Then, all four of the captured rebate were thrown in front of the palace door. How do we do this? Captain Wood saw Deep Blue Viscount shaking like mad. Deep Blue Viscount, with his still shaky voice, said, Make them kneel in front of the gate, and then cut off their heads. Their blood should be absorbed by the gate. Mr. Help. F. Asterisk CK. I'm going to fight you. The four rebate begged for their lives. Others were mad. Some of them wished to kill themselves. But no matter what they wished to do, they could not move. Captain Wood unleashed a power before any of them could move their fingers. They were kneeling before the door now. Don't kill me. I am Night River King's man, a rebate baron shouted. When he shouted that out, the other three barons started shouting, too. They were all well-known at some level. Captain Wood ignored their pleas, though. He grabbed the scared Deep Blue Viscount and brought him in front of the door. He made him kneel with the four barons. Captain Wood, what is this? I told you what you wanted to know. Deep Blue Viscount was terrified. There are four rebate barons, and you said you need four. Isn't that quite a coincidence? Captain Wood said coldly. Mister, I did not lie. You really only need four. Deep Blue Viscount shouted. Captain Wood looked up to the painting on the wall and said, Kill. The four marquees moved to cut the heads of the rebate off. Five in total with Deep Blue Viscount included. Hansen and Gu Chiching frowned. This was just like the sanctuary. If you were weak, you would only end up getting bullied. Deep Blue Viscount and the others were all killed. 
Then, Captain Wood withdrew his power. The five headless bodies were still in a kneeling position as the neck squirted out blood that spray painted the door. The blood began to float up and stain the markings across the door before being wholly absorbed. The five headless corpses continued to squirt blood ceaselessly. It was a creepy thing to see. The barons had killed before, but seeing this, it made their legs grow soft. Catcha. The five bodies shriveled up as all their blood was drawn into the door. The bronze door turned red, and then it made a sound. It was just a sound, though. The door did not open. The five bodies were all dried up now, lying on the ground. They were like husks, devoid of any fluid. You. Go and open the door. Captain Wood pointed at one of the barons. The baron was so scared that he wet his pants. But even so, he still walked toward the door, shivering constantly. He pushed the red bronze door open. The bronze door opened, and light spilled out of the gap. When the group saw what lay inside there, they were quite surprised. Inside, there was a small replica of Narrow Moon. Each moon had its own orbital ring, and in the center of them all, there was an orb. Like a sun, it gleamed brightly. That was at the center of the Purple Bronze Palace. Chapter 1852, Raven Hansen was shocked. Other than the strange solar system within, the Purple Bronze Palace was empty. Countless moons orbited a sun, and they looked like they had been there for a long time. The Baron that opened the door stood where he was, as Captain Wood excitedly moved forward to push him out of the way. He walked forward, and the four Marquis followed. Hansen thought it was strange that they suddenly seemed braver. They hadn't sent their cannon fodder in first in case there were traps. It didn't seem like a very good thing to do. And as this strange feeling continued to permeate Hansen's temperament, Captain Wood kneeled in the air like a knight. As he faced the sun, he said, Lord Sky God, greetings from your most loyal rebate slave. Hansen felt his eyeballs bulge in their sockets, and it seemed like everyone else was equally surprised. He thought there was going to be a fight with the situation changing so suddenly. It looks like the god that the rebate obey is the sun. It is no wonder it looks like that, Gu Chiching said quietly. Hansen understood what she was saying. No wonder the rebate didn't have accounts of their victory over the ravens. It did not look as if they had beaten them at all. If the rebate had won the war, even if the enemy had been weak and pitiable, they still could have claimed that it was a heroic and noble victory. There was only one possible reason for the rebate to avoid talking about their victory over the raven. They hadn't actually won. Something must have happened to the raven, providing the rebate a fortunate opportunity to steal Narrow Moon for themselves. Whether or not the raven had completely disappeared was something they were not sure of. You guys still remember me? What do you want, providing sacrifices like that? The sun-like orb possessed an old voice. Lord Sky God. I. I, Captain Wood, looked hesitant to say it, and his face twisted a little in the attempt to speak. Captain Wood had come here on Black Moon King's orders. The wish he had to make was something Black Moon King desired. But right now, another thought crept across his mind. His mind was in two halves, and his face looked strange. After a while of thought, he said, Lord Sky God, we require a fire seed. The sunlike orb said, You should know that a sacrifice like that is not enough for a fire seed. You will require more. When Han San and the others heard this, they tensed. If Captain Wood required live sacrifices, they would be in danger. But things were not as Hansen feared. Captain Wood brought out a box. He held it up to the Sky God and said, Sky God, this is my sacrifice. The box in Captain Wood's hands started to fly. It went past a moon right towards the sun. After some time passed, Sun Sky God said, Good. This is enough. You can be granted a fire seed. After that, the sun released a small fire. It was like the light of a candle, and it flew directly back to Captain Wood. Captain Wood pulled out a black bottle to put the flame inside. He closed it, and then put it away. Thank you, Sky God. Captain Wood bowed, and then went on to ask, Sky God, is there still one more wish available to be made? No. The three wishes have been granted. Sun Sky God used his old voice. Did Chiron Earl make two wishes? Where did he get that many sacrifices? Captain Wood's face changed. Sun Sky God said, Chiron Earl only made one wish. Not long ago, a Viscount approached and made a wish. So, the three wishes have now been made. Captain Wood's face looked ill, and he said, A Viscount made a wish? Who? You can return to whence you came now. Sun Sky God did not answer his question. 
Captain Wood did not dare disobey the command, so he simply bowed and left the Purple Bronze Palace with his four marquees. He looked quite gloomy. Now Hansen wondered if Wind Viscount was the one who made the wish. It didn't make sense if he had, though. If he had made a sacrifice and gone through all that effort, why would he have died not long after? After Captain Wood had left the hall, Sun Sky God's voice boomed across the hall. If you have the raven feather, why do you not make a wish? Everyone was shocked, and no one knew who his question was directed at. Hansen was shocked, and he thought to himself, the raven feather cannot be that steel feather, can it? If you have the raven feather, you can make one more wish. Sun Sky God's voice sounded again. Everyone looked at each other, wondering who amongst them might have had such a feather. Hansen stayed quiet, but when he stepped forward, he noticed Captain Wood and the others' faces change. Mr. Sky God, what are these raven markings? Hansen did not make a wish. He simply asked a question before all else. Sun Sky God answered, Chiron Earl made a wish to grow a raven. You need a sacrifice to grow the raven, and the people with the marks on them are the sacrifices. Then, might I ask how it is possible to erase those raven marks? Hansen asked. Sun Sky God seemed to show bias towards Hansen, and he answered him again. You do not need to erase them. When the raven is born, the marks will fade. The marks will not bring harm to the people possessing them. In fact, those who have it will be granted raven blood. It will make them stronger. Now, Hansen was able to understand why Sky God was so nice and so willing to answer the questions. But Hansen had to keep on asking. Then, how do I make the raven be born in a way that the sacrifices don't die? You find more sacrifices. Find more than you need, and you will live, Sun Sky God said with certainty. Is there anything else? Is there a method that won't require any sacrifices? Hansen asked with a frown. You can use your wish to erase those marks, of course. You ask too many questions. Now, sacrifice the raven feather and make your wish, Sun Skyot said. Chapter 1853 Wish Hansen did not like making wishes. He knew what had happened to Dawn, Uncle Bug, and the Ning family's second mister, and it had completely soured him on the concept of making wishes. Hansen did not think Sky God was a good character. Chiron Earl had made a wish, but he was killed alongside the rest of his helpers. He did not know if Wind Viscount had made a wish, but he had died, too. And on top of that, he had infected the rest of Hansen's people back at base with the sacrificial marking. Hansen did not say anything, and there were only two wishes he could realistically make. One wish was to ask Sky God to erase everyone's markings, but that was something that Sky God was suspiciously leading him to request. If he wasn't leading Hansen on, he wouldn't have mentioned the possibility in the first place. Hansen did not think he was any more important than Maduke. But Sky God had spoken a lot more to Hansen, and so it was fairly obvious that Sky God wanted something from him. Hansen couldn't make this wish. Even if everyone did get their markings removed, the egg was still around. The infection, in some way, would go on. And on top of that, Hansen only had one raven feather. He could also wish for the raven to be born without the need for a sacrifice. According to what Sky God had told him, if the raven was born, the markings would be useless. The people with them would not be hurt, and if anything, those who had been marked would only benefit. But Hansen couldn't be sure this was the truth just because Sky God had said so. It might just be another way that Sky God was trying to deceive him. If this was the truth, there was the whole matter of pondering what to do once the raven was born. It required a grand sacrifice for its birth, so only the gods knew how much it would later require as it grew up. At least it wouldn't have the ability to kill, presumably. But that couldn't be known until it was born. It could actually be scarier once it was born than when it was in the egg. Wishes like that seemed too dangerous to haunt Senator, but the Silver Fox, Xie Qin King, and Gu Qi Cheng possessed the mark. If you didn't sort this out soon, everyone here could die. Make your wish. Sun Sky God's voice boomed again, echoing across the hall. Hansen did not bring out the steel feather yet, though. He just asked, Lord Sky God, is there anyone else like you that can grant a wish through sacrifices? This has nothing to do with your wish, Sun Sky God said. It has nothing to do with my wish, but I had a few friends who made a wish to a so-called God. Their dreams might have come true, but ultimately, their lives all turned to misery. I am afraid of ending up like them. I don't want to make a wish and find myself unable to enjoy it, Hansen said slowly. I am not that kind of god, Sunskyot said. So, you were saying there are other gods like you? 
Han Sen's eyes turned bright. He had been looking for that god for a long time, but he had never been able to pick up on a single lead. He hadn't expected to find one here. You cannot compare those fake gods to someone like me, Sun Sky God said in irritation. Now Hansen knew that other gods did exist. And now Hansen wanted to know information concerning the god Sky God knew, and whether one of them was the god that the seventh team had encountered. Hansen wished to ask something more, but Sun Sky God said, I am going to rest. Give me your feather and make the wish now, or wait another thousand years. I appreciate the offer. I'll think about it, and maybe I'll make this wish in a thousand years, Hansen said, then tried to exit the Purple Bronze Palace. When he had entered the palace, he stayed near the door. He didn't enter too far, so he thought he could bolt outside quickly enough if something bad happened. But now Hansen noticed he had underestimated Sky God. As he tried to reach the door, the door suddenly looked so far away. He wouldn't be able to reach it. You are a little creature no greater than an ant. Where do you think you are? You cannot come and go so simply. Make your wish with your feather, or I will send you to hell. You will suffer for the rest of eternity, mark my words. Sun Sky God sounded a little peeved. I told you I have no wish to make, Hansen responded. Then think about it, right here, right now. Sun Sky God coldly went on to say, but hurry. You might end up dying before you were able to make a wish. Hansen frowned, not understanding what Sky God meant. But soon he did. Hansen's fingers and hair grew quickly. He began growing a long beard as something else occurred to his skin. Time has sped up. Hansen's face changed. Would Duke and all the others were shocked. Controlling time really was something only a god could do. Hansen looked at his body. With the speed he was aging, his few hundred year lifespan would be over in a few hours. I am Sky God. I can do anything, if it is what I desire. Sky God sounded cold. It didn't look as if he was showing off, though. This was something ordinary for him. In that case, why don't you just take the feather? Why'd I have to make a sacrifice? Hansen's body was getting older, but he wasn't panicking yet. Hansen had the powers of space and time himself. Although he wasn't as strong as Sky God, Sky God couldn't bluff him. When Hansen spoke, Sky God went quiet and did not say anything more. Hansen's body kept getting older. His hair had reached his feet, and the beard had reached the ground. He wanted to leave the hall, more than anything. But even at full speed, he couldn't reach the door. It was always one step away from him. Old Han, I am coming. Xie Qin King shouted, wishing to barge into the hall. He did not care if there was a god inside or not. Gu Qi Qing pulled out her sword named Pure. She readied herself to help Xie Qin King and Han Sr. Don't come in. I know what to do. Han Sen's shout prevented Xie Qin King from coming in. Chapter 1854 Walking Out of the Hall Xie Qin King stopped just short of the entrance and spoke aloud to Han Sr. Do you really have a way? If you don't, I'll pull you out of there. Don't worry. I have a way, Hansen said calmly. Hansen, give him your sacrifice and make the wish. Do you want to die? Captain Wood said, with a frown. He is your god, Rebate. He is not the god of the crystallizes. Who said I absolutely must make a wish with him? Hansen mocked the scenario. It looks like you really don't want to live. Captain Wood looked rather gloomy. It didn't matter to him if Hansen wanted to live or die, but he was on planet Eclipse. If Hansen randomly died there, under his supervision, he couldn't rightly explain to Queen what had transpired. Sky God, I am not making a wish. And I will not hand over the feather. Even if you kill me or torture me, you won't obtain it. So come on, give me what you've got, Hansen said, then continued walking toward the door. Sun Sky God did not say a word. Hansen's body was growing old very quickly, though. His face had wrinkled, and his hair had gone white. Even if you do not want to use the raven feather to save your people, aren't you interested in something for yourself? How about immortality? If you make a wish, you can live forever. Or you can become the king of some land, if you so choose. I can grant you anything you want, right here, right now. Sun Sky God finally broke his silence. Hansen did not respond. He continued walking away. He couldn't leave, so he just kept on going. Has someone you love died? If you make a wish, I can bring them back for you. Sun Sky God offered more, seeing Han Sen's continued disinterest. Han Sen didn't say anything to him, though. He just kept on going, as if he hadn't heard a thing. If you want to become Narrow Moon's absolute master, you only have to ask that of me. 
Sun Sky God's offerings were becoming grander as time went on. If this continued, it wouldn't be long before Hansen found himself in the seat of the Creator. Hansen remained unfazed and uncaring. He kept on walking. He walked in the direction of the door that could never be reached. Not long after, Hansen's hair had all turned white. His face was covered in wrinkles. He was like a dying old man. He was really old at this point. Little Silver, who had been sitting on Han Sen's shoulder the whole time, was old, too. His silver hair had turned white, and it looked as if he was going to die of old age. What? Are you not going to help him? A Marquise mocked. Xie Qing King said coldly, he said he has a way out of there. The Marquise lifted his top lip, thinking Xie Qing King was merely too scared to go to Han Sen's aid. The others thought the same, as well. They could see him standing on the precipice, only watching Han Sen and refusing to step inside. Suddenly, the purple bronze door shut. And then, you could not see what was beyond there. This also meant Han Sen was now hidden from sight. It looks like Sky God is angry. Han Sen is most likely dead now. We should go, Master. Captain Wood was speaking to Black Steel. Black Steel frowned and looked at the solemn door that had closed. He said, Okay, let's leave. What are you two doing there? Why are you not leaving? A Marquise asked Xie Qing King and Gu Qi Qing. We are waiting for Hansen, Xie Qing King coldly said. Earlier, you two were afraid to step inside. Stop pretending about this nonsense. The Marquise lifted his lip. Let them stay, Blacksteel said. Then, he signaled for the rest of the team to depart. Then, he murmured to Xie Qing King, Tell Hansen that I'm sorry. I will leave much of the Lotus in the base. Okay. Xie Qing King affirmed he would. When Captain Wood took the others to the place's exit, Xie Qing King spoke again. He said, Is Hansen really going to be fine? I thought you were confident he would be. Gu Qi Qing looked at the door before them and spoke carelessly. I am, but that sky god is a dodgy fellow. I am afraid Hansen will walk out as an old man. Xie Qing King slumped his shoulders. Gu Qi Qing understood what he was getting at, but she did not respond to him. A lot of time passed, and after an hour, the purple bronze door opened. Hansen came out alongside Little Silver. Hansen had not become an old man, and he was as young as he had been when he first entered the hall. He had not been injured, either. Little Silver was fine, too. And he had his old silver fur that was radiant and shiny. Did you make a wish? Gu Qing spoke to Hansen, looking real dim. Hansen shook his head and pulled out a box. He smiled and said, the item Sky God wanted is still in here. Even if I make a wish, he won't listen. Why would he let you go unharmed, if you didn't make one? Xie Qing King asked with much curiosity. I was fine the whole time. Him speeding up time was merely an illusion. Hansen smiled. It was an illusion? That means he wasn't real, and all his power was merely for show? Xie Qing King said. He doesn't have all the powers he pretended to have, but at least his space powers were legit. Even though he is not really all-powerful, he is still at a deified level. Even if we have to fight him eventually, we cannot deal with him now. Hansen shook his head. Why did he not kill you? And just take the feather. Xie Qing King could not believe that things had worked out this way. Hansen did not answer Xie Qing King, though. He just looked at Gu Qi Qing and asked, That Sun Sky God. Was he the same God as the one you met? Gu Qi Qing shook her head. I don't think so. This one gave me a completely different feeling to the one I previously met. That being said, there appears to be a thread connecting them somehow. Maybe. I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe they are both of the same kind? They must both have a limitation of some sort. They cannot just kill people. Hansen did not continue with that train of questions, though. He just looked around and asked, Captain Wood and the others have left? As soon as the door shut, they took their leave. Black Steel told us he would leave some of the lotus roots for us at the base, Xie Qing King answered. I am afraid they might not even be able to leave the palace. As far as I know, those who make wishes don't meet a fond fate. Let's go. I hope we can catch up with them. Hansen took off power walking. I don't understand. How did you know all that was an illusion? Yu Qi Qing asked, matching Hansen's speed. She had no idea it was all a trick. Hansen did not answer. He patted his shoulder and little invisible revealed itself. Han. Sin smiled. If that power was real, he should have aged, too. Chapter 1855, Egg in the Fire. The three of them sped up. They chased after Captain Wood's group for a dozen miles, 
before coming across a body crumpled on the floor. It looked as if the person had died a long time ago, but strangely, the clothing the body wore belonged to one of the barons that had previously accompanied them. And there wasn't just one such body. A little further on, they found more barren corpses. The manner in which they died seemed to reflect what had occurred to Wind Viscount. Their heads had been blown open, leaving a gaping hole. Weird. Didn't they have the lotus roots? Didn't they erase the markings? That should have at least lasted them a good while. Gu Chiching frowned. It looks like the lotus root might be useless, after all. Hansen pointed to the ground. There were some remains of the lotus on the ground. And near the shreds of lotus, there was another barren corpse. The man was holding half of a lotus root, indicating he had been eating it when he died. Halfway through his consumption of the plant, part of his head had exploded. You were telling me that those lotus roots are actually useless? Xie Qing King's face changed. Maybe they're useless, but we don't know for sure yet. These guys are dead, but you guys are alive. It doesn't look like this matter is all that simple. Hmm, we need to catch up with them. I hope I am wrong, of course. If I'm not, things will have taken a swift turn for the worse. Hansen sped up on his travel, and every now and again, they would catch sight of a baron that was dead and clutching a lotus. Little Silver suddenly came to a stop. The egg mark on his forehead turned into a blackbird. Little Silver seemed upset by the change, and he kept on scratching the point. My head feels weird, too. Xie Qing King grasped his forehead. Hansen looked at Xie Qing King and Gu Qiqing. The egg markings on their foreheads had turned into birds. You guys should eat some of the lotus and stay back here. Don't follow me any further. Hansen grabbed a lotus and passed one to Little Silver. Little Silver gobbled it up, and he was struck with that chilling sensation. Afterward, the bird on his forehead grew fainter. You guys should take more of the lotus and stay away from here. I'll go on ahead and take a look. After that, Hansen summoned his teeth rabbit shoes and ran forward quickly. He traveled a dozen miles in a single moment. On his way, he saw the bodies of many more barons and even one marquise. The latter was one of Captain Wood's guards. Hansen kept going forward until he came before a palace. There, he saw something that gave him a shock. In front of that palace, the big black egg was hovering in midair. It was burning with golden fire. Below the egg, three marquees and Captain Wood himself were also ablaze with golden fire. They looked ready to become charcoal. Captain Wood was doing okay. His body was surrounded by blue light, and he was managing to hold off the flames. The three marquees, on the other hand, were truly on fire. Black steel had fallen across the stairs. The dragon back knife was hovering over his head as the shadow of a dragon covered him to protect him. It was holding the gold fire at bay. Beezy's T. Ghost teeth knife leaped out from Han Sen's backpack, its blade pointed at the egg. It emitted a purple mist, like the egg was a grand foe. The gold flames of the egg were approaching like a meteor. Ghost teeth knife cut them in half. But the golden flames that were cut in half continued their approach. Hansen dodged them, then grabbed Ghost Teeth Knife. Ghost Teeth Knife could only attack. It wasn't much for defense, so Hansen could not use it to block. It was a far cry from the Dragon Back Knife, which was currently focused on protecting Black Steel. What's going on? Hansen asked as he evaded more fire. He was wearing his teeth rabbit shoes, so he was blisteringly quick. The fire was unable to burn him. When Captain Wood saw Han Sen, who had not died or been permanently wounded from his time in that hall, he was incredibly shocked. He couldn't dwell much on the matter, given the current circumstances, however. So, he just said, kill the raven blood and do not let it get free. Otherwise, we are all dead. Black Steel then yelled to Han Sen, the egg-absorbed sky god's fire seed. The power of its fire is cruel and strong. You should run. Wood Duke was screaming. Eventually, he proved unable to hold back the fire, and his skin began to sear and sizzle. Hansen wasn't keen on the prospect of saving Captain Wood, but Little Silver and the others had the mark. If he didn't destroy the egg right here, they'd all end up like Captain Wood. Hansen's teeth rabbit shoes were incredibly fast, and with a swift move, he was able to dodge two flames. Holding Ghost Teeth Knife, he swept forward to strike the giant egg wreathed in golden fire. Han Sen's power wasn't sufficient to activate Ghost Teeth Knife's true strength, but right now, the knife was feeling threatened. It summoned power by its own volition, power of proportions that exceeded the capabilities of a duke. It was like the egg was a living creature. 
It cast a number of gold flames towards Hansen, which came down on him like rain. Hansen's body was like a bird in the sky. He evaded a dozen fires and slashed the egg. Dong. The purple mist and the golden flames were both extinguished. But the egg did not get damaged. Ghost Teeth Knife's full strength did not affect it. This realization made Hansen frown. More attacks were coming at Hansen now, too. So, Hansen used his teeth rabbit shoes to fly. He evaded all the fire and employed his knife mind. He looked like a monster as he swooped down at the eggshell, slashing. Catcha. Some marks were left on the egg, but it had yet to crack. Hansen was too weak, and he could only push his power to reach the capabilities of a Viscount. If he had the power of a king, alongside that ghost teeth knife, he could undoubtedly break the egg in two. Hansen kept moving his body as he tried to dodge the golden flames. He was going to hit the giant egg again. When he hit the egg this time, however, there was no noise. It was like the knife found itself suddenly sticking to the egg. But when he did this, the egg itself showed a reaction, and it bounced itself away. Hansen was delighted by this, as he had just used Dean Yang Blast. The power he used from the ghost teeth knife seemed to work. The egg backed away like it was scared but it still carried its golden fire. It dodged Hansen's knife, not wanting to get hit again. It was just an egg, though, and it couldn't move very fast. Hansen, on the other hand, soared through the sky like a phoenix. Again, he slashed the giant egg. The egg jumped like a cat getting its tail stepped on. Chapter 1856, Sky God is Angry. Hansen's body was flashing in the air. When he struck the giant egg, Captain Wood was completely shocked. A speed like that, and a knife mind like that. How? Is his teeth knife mind as good as the queen's? What is this? Isn't he just a baron? Go's teeth knife came against the giant egg, making it swing in the air like a tumbler. Hansen could feel the life inside it. Go's teeth and Hansen's knife mind had definitely damaged whatever creature resided inside. It had been a hearty blow to whatever was within. After the egg was injured, the gold fire it used took on the shape of a fiery bird. It chased after Hansen wildly, but Hansen still had his teeth rabbit shoes. He could still move much faster than that fiery bird, and it couldn't even singe him. Suddenly, though, a gold flame rose in the air like a blooming flower. The gold fire started to peel, as a handsome man revealed himself from the flickering lights. The man looked holy, like a god of some sort. Hansen, killing the raven will not benefit you. If you let him go, I can promise you three things— the godlike man in the air quietly told Han Sr. Is this Sky God's true form? Captain Wood was shocked again. He didn't think Sky God could leave the Purple Bronze Hall. He hadn't expected the elusive figure to show up outside the hall, and in another form as well. Hansen ignored the golden man, though. He still thrashed the egg, making it rumble and rock even more. I can erase the marks you all possess. In performing three services, the man that was clad in gold clothes went on to. Hansen kept on hitting the egg, though. Eventually, there was a noise, and it prompted the egg to fall down and hit the ground. Hansen jumped down next to it, with his ghost teeth knife rampaging like a beast. It kept on hitting the egg, until a strange noise started to sound from inside it. It was like the sound of something crying. Enough. The gold-clothed man's face changed now, and he gave the command coldly. Golden fire rained down like water, covering the world. The gold-clothed man was in the air staring down at Hansen, asserting himself like some sort of deity. And then, he said, I broke my own rules today, by letting you leave with your life. You figured out that I am just a being who uses illusions. After the voice, the gold flame turned the palace into a realm of lava. The gold fire became a monstrous entity, as dragons formed a firestorm through the air around them. It was like the whole world was on that man's side. With that display of power, Wood Duke wanted to immediately cowed out of the gold man. Hansen stood defiantly, though, ignoring him. He kept on slashing the egg, making the crying sound sing even louder. The egg was beginning to get webbed with cracks. The gold-clothed man was furious at this point, and the dragon and fire beast heard his rage. They raced down towards Hansen, igniting the atmosphere with all sorts of fire. Hansen was like an ant before a flood. It seemed as if those monstrous fires would have no trouble in destroying him. A lot of those fiery beasts roared at Hansen, with tongues of flame lashing the air. They almost managed to get Hans Senator, but instead, they hit the ground and made the earth itself melt. Hansen still showed no concern with them, and he kept on striking the egg. The egg made even more noise now, 
and even more cracks began to show across its form. Captain Wood and Black Steel were utterly gobsmacked as they witnessed all this. It was difficult to believe Han Sin was able to withstand the madness around him and continue attacking the egg. A duke like Captain Wood would have been a shivering mess on the floor if he was faced with such outstanding pressure. How do I make you stop? The godly-looking man's eyes burned with fire. His face was completely twisted. The answer he received was delivered by the ghost teeth knife, though. Hansen was acting as if he was completely oblivious to everything except his enemy. Clutching the knife tight, he kept wailing against the egg. Eventually, the black egg could not withstand the might, and it cracked deeply. A lava-like juice began to seep from the crevice. Hansen, if you hit this thing one more time, I will make your entire race suffer. The gold-robed man bellowed. Catcha. Again, it was only the knife and the sound of a breaking egg that answered him. The egg was suffering with even more cracks now. The purple mist of the blade came against the egg as a golden juice started to flow out like blood. I, King Jun, swear to God, I will reduce your entire race to their primitive days of sticks and stones. The entire intelligence of your race will be reduced to a level that will only allow you to eat meat. The gold-robed man spat. The entire mountain began to rock and rumble, with the noise of what sounded like thunder. Clouds formed in the sky, and they swirled as they cast a rain of blood. It was like his vow had been answered. There was a lot of thunder, like a lashing punishment from some great god. The rivers of blood that were forming, alongside the gold fires, made the mountain look like the result of an ensuing apocalypse. A bolt of lightning exploded right next to Han Senator the fire beast roared into his ears. But even so, Hansen showed no care or concern. Without a single moment of hesitation, his grip on his knife remained firm. Slash after slash. Ghost Teeth Knife struck the egg like mad. The egg was covered in marks, and the flow of the lava-like blood increased. It was all over the place, along with the purple mist. It was pretty creepy. Xie Qing King, Gu Chicheng, and Little Silver had the mark on their heads. Little Angel back at base might have had it, too. And that godlike figure that called himself King Jun did not seem like the trustworthy sort. All the creatures that had made a wish with him had met a grisly end. The only way to erase the mark now, Hansen figured, was to destroy the raven egg. There wasn't any other way. Hansen knew that King Jun God was limited by some sort of power, and that was why the powerful being could not fight him directly. Still, Hansen believed that what he was doing now would yield the best results. The dragon-shaped thunder exploded next to Han Sr. The rain of blood soaked Han Sr. The fiery beasts and King Jun's roars were like curses being chanted from the pits of hell. But despite all that, nothing could stop Han Sin's ghost teeth knife. Catcha. An unknown number of slashes later, the egg cracked open, shattering into pieces. The lava-like juices cascaded out, flooding its proximity. Chapter 1857, Killing the Raven. Inside the broken egg, there was a featherless raven. A deep wound crossed its body, oozing purple smoke. The raven's eyes were partly open, but little more than slits. It looked furious but it appeared to be suffering inside the lava-like juice. And while it seemed to be unable to stand, it lurched forward with the speed of lightning. Quickly, it came toward Han Sen, seeking to bite him with a mouth wreathed in fire. Ghost Teeth Knife looked so angry in return with its purple mist. Han Sen did not have to activate it himself as the blade moved for him. It was like a hungry demon, and it wanted nothing more than to kill. The raven had not fully developed yet. There were no feathers on its body and it was grievously injured. There was blood caking most of its skin. The knife came at the raven and cut it, leaving a lesion across its flesh. The full power of a king-class ghost teeth knife only left a scratch across it, though. Hansen kept moving, swinging his blade at the raven as he went. It was still small, and its eyes were only partially open. Its body was still naked, and its skin wasn't as firm and developed as it could be. But even so, the raven was not afraid of the assault. After the attack, it looked at Hansen with even anger. King Jun had not said anything. He coldly looked at Hansen with an expression of pure hatred and murder. It was scary to witness. Eventually, the blood rain, thunder, and fire began to fade. The palace had been reduced to little more than a ruin. Hansen slashed the bird again, delivering more and more wounds upon it. Gold blood spilled out of it, and it was clear Hansen would soon end up killing the raven. Hansen, if you kill it, you will never be rid of me. King Jun sounded calm when he spoke, so calm it was chilling. Katcha. Without hesitation, 
Ghost Teeth Knife delivered a clean cut across the raven's neck. The head was lopped right off. King June did not say anything. He merely looked at Han Senator then, he disappeared. But the look he had given Han Sin was remarkable. Deified creature hunted, baby Sun Raven. Sun Raven be soul obtained. Deified Jean obtained. When Hansen heard the announcement, he was thrilled with delight. When the Sun Raven was killed, the marks on the foreheads of the others began to disappear, too. They became gold, and then melted into their flesh with the rippling mirage of a fire. Gu Chi Ching sat down on the ground and used her Qi Gong to absorb the flame. Xie Qing King's body, meanwhile, was glowing with silver light. Little Silver's eyes flickered with lightning. The barons at the base used their skills to absorb the mark, but the women and children were unable to. The gold blended into their skin and changed their bodies instead. Boom. The mountain continued to shake. It came from the purple bronze hall. It seemed to have erupted, and the palace came flying at them through the air. Hansen? I will be back. Soon, soon. King Jun's voice echoed through the underbelly of the mountain until the palace disappeared. Captain Wood wanted to get up, but he had been badly burned. His flesh and even his bones had been charred. It didn't seem likely that he'd live. Sir, take my body back to Planet Green, if it is of no trouble for you. That is where I was born, and if I am buried there. I know it will make for a fine resting place, Wood said. Wood, you raised me up. You have helped me a lot. Without you, I would have been killed by those gold fires. I cannot let you die. Black Steel said as he tried to pick up Captain Wood. Hansen, I am going to take him home to heal. I am going now. But Hansen stopped him and said, with the condition he is in, he won't even reach the base. He won't reach another planet. There is nothing else I can do. I have to do this. Black Steel said. Hansen thought for a moment, and then said, wait, there is a better chance of him surviving right here. Young Master, it is fine. I know what will happen to me. I will be happy enough if you can take my lifeless body to Planet Green. Wood was surprisingly calm. Blacksteel asked Hansen, What are you suggesting? His body was burned by fire, and his body is suffering from fire poisoning. That is bad. He can't make it to camp. But these lotuses have a cold element within them. If they can suppress the raven mark, it will help the fire and perhaps eliminate the fire poisoning, Hansen said. The lotuses might be able to clear the fire poisoning, but the wounds, Black Steel shook his head. That's why we'll need him, Hansen said, then whistled to the sky. Not long after, something silver emerged from the ruins. Little Silver swiftly came before Hans Sr. Little Silver, bite the lotus and put it on his wounds. Hansen gave Little Silver the lotus. Little Silver took the plant and chewed it up. Then, he moved over and spat it out over Wood's wounds. The burned skin began to smoke, and it made Wood scream in agony. Little Silver chewed up a lot of the lotuses and placed them atop all the wounds. And whenever the wounds came into contact with the lotuses, it was like a ladle of water being poured over smoldering charcoal. The white lotuses turned black. Black Steel, feed him some lotus, Hansen told Black Steel. Black Steel crushed up some of the lotuses and fed Captain Wood. He already seemed a little better after eating what he had been given. His wounds were still really bad, though. It would be difficult for him to be healed but the mere fact that he was alive was enough for now. He would survive long enough for his body to recuperate. Thank you. Captain Wood gave Hans in a complicated look. Don't thank me. This is because of black steel. Otherwise, I wouldn't care whether you lived or died, Hansen said coldly. No matter what the reason is, you saved me. And that means I owe you. Captain Wood shook his head. Hansen did not say anything in response. He really didn't like Wood, and the less he had to do with him the better. Xie Qing King and Gu Qi Qing soon appeared there. The marks on their foreheads had indeed disappeared. Black Steel picked up Captain Wood, and Hansen lifted the Sun Raven's body. The entire carcass of the bird emanated a strange power. It was not as xenogenic, either. Hansen was keen to research what the thing really was. Chapter 1858, Bauer Enters Kindergarten when they emerged from the mountain, it didn't seem as if anything had been affected by the events that occurred inside. The landscape was the same as it was before they entered. Back in the base, Black Steel took Captain Wood to an airship where he could heal and recover. The people in the base had lost their marks. Hansen asked Little Angel and Zero what things were like after he left, and he was surprised to learn that a mark had appeared on every single person in the base other than Little Angel and Zero. 
With the crisis having come to an end, the day-to-day -day routine of the base returned to normal. It had been a rough period of time, though, and the base had been dealt quite a blow. There were only a dozen barons remaining and one viscount. They would need more manpower for the future, that much was certain. Hansen did not have the time to recruit right now, though. And at the moment, he was more concerned about how he might cook up and eat the small sun raven. He tried cooking and grilling the bird, but the meat was like steel. It certainly wasn't edible in its current condition. Hansen took the sun raven back to the sanctuary and nothing happened. It was still not edible, so he decided to put it into storage for the moment. This is Bauer's first day in kindergarten. We have to go and accompany her, Ji Yinren said to Hans Sr. Sure. Ah, my cutie pie is going to kindergarten. Hansen picked up Bauer. Bauer had grown up a lot, and she looked like an average three-year-old now. Dad, I want to stay with you. I don't want to go to school. Bauer looked troubled. It will be hard for you to join me where I am right now. It's not a good place. When things get better, though, I will bring you with me. But for now, you should go to school, Hansen said, encouraging Bauer. They moved to be closer to the school. Little Flower had been kidnapped by Old Cat, so Ji Yin An was focusing her maternal efforts on Bauer instead. After the formalities were conducted, Bauer was left to her own devices in the kindergarten. Hansen and Ji Yin An did not go straight home, and instead, they walked around for a while. Hansen, I miss Little Flower. Ji Yin Ran's voice was quiet. Me, too. All of this is because of that blasted old cat. But don't worry, Little Flower is fine there. Old cat sent me some videos, remember? Hansen tried comforting her. Once in a while, they'd receive a new video of Little Flower. It must have been old cat who was sending them, but he never showed up himself. Knowing Little Flower is fine is okay, and all, but I miss having him right next to me. It's like there's something missing in me, when he's not here. Ji Yin Ran was still sad. I will bring Little Flower home and skin that old cat, as soon as I am able to. Hansen gritted his teeth as he spoke. Hansen changed his tone and said, How about we make a little Little Flower? When Little Flower comes back, he'll have a sibling. How about we make a few, so this place is more crowded? I don't want that many. I am not a breeding pig. Ji Yin and looked very angry. Where did I find such a beautiful pig? Hansen laughed and picked her up. What are you doing? We're out in public. Ji Yinren growled. You are my wife. I can hug you. Can I? I don't care what others think of us. In the kindergarten, Bauer was sitting on a small chair. She held her jaw, looking miserable and bored. Bauer, why aren't you playing with your classmates? Are you sick? A woman teacher crouched down next to her and stroked her head as she spoke. I don't like those games. They're boring. Bauer blinked. How about I teach you how to sing? The teacher asked. What song? Bauer asked the teacher. The teacher clapped her hands and acted all cute. She said, follow along with what I sing. I picked up a coin on the road. Teacher, how old are you? Bauer asked, looking at her. 24. What about it? The teacher looked at Bauer strangely, unsure why she had been asked that question. You are so old, and yet you act cute and sing stupid songs. Poor you. Bauer sighed. The teacher's face twitched as she was taken aback. She held back the urge to smack Bauer on the head and simply said, I am still young. Ha ha. 24 is very old. Women like you are prone to say they are two years younger than they actually are, too. So, you are at least 25. Perhaps almost 30. I suppose you still don't even have a boyfriend yet. That is so sad. You don't have a boyfriend at that age, and you have to act all cute in the kindergarten. When you're off work, I bet you go shopping to buy pointless things and make yourself feel better about yourself. Bauer looked straight at her and went on to say, but on top of that, your wages are probably low. I am afraid you can only buy knockoff products. If you went to a decent brand store, you could probably only afford the cheapest items and ask for the biggest box and bag to carry it around on the streets, trying to prove to others that you exist. This the asterisk am in kid. The teacher's face went dark and her face twitched repeatedly. She forced a smile. It is not like that. The saddest thing was that Bauer was correct, and it made her feel extremely sad. Teacher, I think you are very good at gambling, Bauer said. No, gambling is bad. Why would I do that? Haha. Uh -huh. The teacher's face twitched, and her smile was terribly forced. 
Your appearance is fair enough, but I bet at home, all you do is smoke and play mahjong. I bet the place is a dirty pigsty, too. Clothes scattered everywhere, with dirty plates molding in the sink for days. Bauer kept on talking. This the asterisk am in kid. The asterisk am in kid. The teacher felt as if she was about to go insane with rage. Bauer's eyes glanced at the woman, her eyes as thin and conniving as a con artist's. Before the teacher ran off, Bauer opened a bag and pulled out a box. Teacher, do you know what this is? Bauer shook the box. This, this, is the legendary lipstick, number 29 from Planet Doris. How could you have it? The female teacher's eyes widened as she looked at it in amazement. You cannot afford it, but you can tell whether it is real or fake, right? Bauer threw it at her. The teacher caught it and looked at it as if it was a million-dollar antique. It's real. The teacher opened it with shiny eyes. Teacher, how about we gamble? If you lose, give me ten dollars. If I lose, I give you this lipstick. Bawa pulled out a pair of dice and smiled. I can't. The teacher receded into thought. Never mind then. I don't like this lipstick, and it is a waste. Now I have to keep on holding it. Bawa sighed and motioned for the teacher to give it back. Hang on. The teacher picked Bauer up and carried her swiftly to a storage room. She looked around like a burglar, then closed the door. One hour later, the storage room was filled with the sound of crying. A voice was heard, saying, Leave me those ten dollars, please. Or at least leave me enough for a meal. I need it for the next two weeks. Chapter 1859 Moon God Festival Hansen held an orb that was around the same size as a man's fist. It shone like a miniature sun. If you looked at it closely, you could see there was something gold swimming inside it. Deified be soul, sun raven, gem tight. As he fiddled with the orb, he considered it. Hansen had obtained a few gem type beast souls in the past. Not many of them existed, as they were quite rare. But they could be used to bring other beast souls up to the same level as the gem beast soul. This was a deified gem type beast soul, and that meant all Hansen would have to do was find another beast soul of a compatible element. If he did, he could bring it up to a deified class. Hansen had a few different beast souls, but nothing like a firebird beast soul. That meant he could not use the deified gem type beast soul at this point in time. Hansen returned it to his sea of soul, and then he looked at the ledger for the base. The base's shortage of manpower kept them from producing much, but something very nice did happen soon after the crisis was averted. A young woman with ordinary Geno armor had a second evolution. She became a baron. Gu Qingqing guessed it might have had something to do with the gold raven mark. Perhaps the energy that melted into their bodies was what prompted the second evolution. The Geno armament she received was a fire type. If the gold raven mark can make people evolve, does that mean all these women and kids could end up becoming xenogeneics or nobles? As Hansen mulled that thought over, he realized he was quite happy about it. Any nobles he developed could become Hansen's loyal army, and he could be more confident about using them. Of course, it still depended on when they could all become nobles. Only Black Steel and Captain Wood knew of the events that occurred in the Raven Palace. It had been many days since then, and yet word had not gotten out. The news had been suppressed by all survivors, it seemed. It did not matter much, anyway, even if word was to get out. There were fewer nobles in the base right now, at least, and that made things easier for him to manage. This also provided Hansen with more time to practice and hunt Xenogeneics. Even so, he was still unable to level up and become a Viscount. Hansen, how are your skills coming along? When Isha finished practicing, she finally called up Hans Sr. Things are going swimmingly, Hansen answered. Isha, upon hearing Hansen say that, smiled. Iceberg was behind her, but she hadn't said a word. Because Isha had told her to review Hansen's current situation, she knew he had lost many barons and viscounts. He always hunted alone, and he didn't focus on his practice. Good. The Moon God Festival is coming. All the elites and their heirs will be going. You should think about joining us. There'll be a test, Isha said coldly. Moon God Festival? Hansen looked at Isha with a modicum of confusion. Isha signaled for Icebird to step forward and explain. The Moon God Festival happens every 49 years. Only the rebate who were born within those 49 years are able to join. Because there are many outsiders within the rebate society, especially over the past few centuries, they are also allowed to join. That is, if they are able to qualify. Iceberg explained it to Hansen, 
so he'd know a bit more about it. It wasn't random that it happened every 49 years. Every 49 years, on the main 11 planets, a moon altar would appear. Creatures that were born within those 49 years could enter the altar to Moon Palace. The Moon Palace was in the center of Narrow Moon, but it was different from the Gold Raven Hall. There was no sun. There were just the planets and Moon God Palace. It was usually cold and hidden in the dark. Not even deified elites could sneak in. During this time, the planet would appear and the Moon God Palace would open up. Anyone who could make it past the altar and reach the palace would be blessed by the Moon God. This was a big thing for the rebate, and the event would even be live-streamed. The first person to be blessed would receive a big reward from the rebate. No one knew what the reward would be, though. It was something that was decided by the elder, and the elder hadn't announced what the reward was going to be yet. But Hansen was more interested in the blessing than the physical reward. The moon god might have been present, but there were no statues or creatures around the palace. The creatures that entered moon god palace looked awfully cold. The blessing was to be bathed in moonlight, it was said, and no actual god showed itself. There was no advantage to going to Moon God Palace early. Once the palace opened, you could be blessed at any point until the palace closed again. The amount of blessing you'd receive was random and didn't depend on timing either. Sometimes, the last person to go would receive the most blessings. Sometimes the earlier arrivals would receive the greatest blessing. There didn't appear to be a reliable rule for how the blessings were distributed. After many moon god festivals, it was deduced that the strength of the blessing depended on the person. Normally, the actual rebate received the strongest blessings. Outsiders rarely ever had a chance to join in, and there was a fairly obvious bias. Isha let Hansen go, but Hansen didn't think he'd receive much of a blessing. She just wanted him to witness the new elites that showed up every 49 years. In the festival, showing off your power was far more important than earning first place. Aside from receiving a bonus from the elders, you'd receive nothing special. Most rebate and xenogeneics just wanted to use the festival to gain fame. Hansen was Queen's only student, and he would definitely be challenged. That was why she mentioned there would be a test for him. 49 years was not a short amount of time, and there were a few viscounts that had joined. An earl had taken part, as well. Ordinarily, they wouldn't kill anyone. But even so, Hansen was a baron, and it was difficult to say if he'd pull through. After they ended the call, Icebird said, what if too many people realize that you were letting him join? You taking him as a student has soured many of the younger ones. I'm afraid they will try to teach him a lesson. It is good for the young ones to suffer failure. Isha smiled. Chapter 1860, Lead Runner. Hansen had nothing to prepare, so he went back to hunting Xenogenix as he usually did. He also spent time practicing his Geno arts. When the Moon God Festival began, Hansen was sent to Planet Blade. It was one of the eleven primary planets, and Moon God Altar could be accessed from there. There weren't many creatures on Planet Blade, and across the past 49 years, only seven to eight could join. As the planet moved, a previously invisible planet appeared directly in the center of Narrow Moon. You didn't need a live stream to see it. All you would have to do was look up and see the planet that hosted the giant palace. It was like a heaven in the cosmos. But that beautiful jade palace looked completely different than the planet that hosted it. The planet itself was barren, devoid of mountains and rivers. The empty side of the planet was facing them. Too, the palace was located on the opposite side of the sphere. The altar teleported you to the other side of the planet, so you'd end up facing the jade palace. You had to walk around it to get inside. The moon god altar appeared on planet Blade, and so Hansen teleported. He wasn't interested in fighting people, as all he wanted to do was take first place and obtain the rewards he might be entitled to as a result. When Hansen appeared on the planet, there were many people standing atop a jade platform. Hansen started running. That planet wasn't very big, and it was just a small moon, but running to the other side would still take a long while. Hansen, don't run. Hansen had only just started running when someone called out to him. It was a black-eared rebate. He was two meters tall, and he was holding a big knife as he ran towards Han Sr. Hansen did not remember seeing this guy before, and so he didn't think it was likely that the man would have a grudge against him. Why was he coming for Hansen? After the black-eared man shouted, everyone looked over to see what was happening. Why are you calling out to me? Hansen asked, as he kept on running. The black-eared man again shouted, don't run. 
I am Night Giant God. Let's fight and see which of us has superior knife skills. Upon hearing what was said, Hansen simply sped up. He ignored the man completely. The guy was just a baron, so there was no point in fighting. He thought the concept was ridiculous, and the last thing Hansen wanted to do was take part in something ridiculous in front of everyone. Hansen, are you really willing to call yourself Queen Student? Take a stand and fight me, if you have the audacity. Night Giant God kept shouting as he chased after Hans Sr. Fortunately, Night Giant God was a fighter who focused on power. He had no chance of catching up with Hans Sr. Still, he kept on running and shouting, which made Hansen depressed. It made Hansen wonder, is he crazy? The young ones that came to the planet were headed in the same direction as Hansen and Night Giant God. It created a scene of Hansen and Night Giant God in front, with many people behind them. Moon God Festival goers usually pick their own path. This was the first time they were all following two people so closely. Are these guys hostile to me? When did I offend them? Hansen looked back at the commotion, and he saw so many people giving pursuit that it looked like a riptide. He was flabbergasted by what he saw. Most people had just come to watch. They didn't plan on fighting Han Senator, they wanted to see how Knife Queen's student performed. Knife Queen is such a high and superior person. Why would she accept a student such as that? He only runs away. Yes. What is he so afraid of? I thought he had a king-class weapon. Why is he so scared? Fight, fight. The creatures that were all watching the stream shouted at their monitors. But they were only watching the live stream, so their voices would not reach the planet. The nobles who witnessed the scene wanted to laugh. I spurred Duke didn't look fondly on the event, either. She thought Hansen's decision to run was an embarrassment to Isha. Isha was impartial to the whole thing, though. She merely watched the video. Night Giant God is unable to catch up. Let's help him. A Viscount smiled to his friend. Let's go and stop him so they can fight. A few Viscounts nodded. They had gone there to watch the show, and bullying Hansen had not been their original plan. But now that he was not willing to fight, despite the challenge, they weren't very happy about it. So, they wanted to stop Hansen and force him to compete in a battle. A dozen Viscounts sped up, went past the main group, and came in close to Han Sr. Old Nine, do you think Hansen can actually fight Night Giant God? A beautiful man with gold bunny ears was amidst a group. He was moving casually, leading others that were behind him. A man with a cow head, who was standing right next to him, said, I do not know, but Night Giant God is incredibly strong. And he's practiced Night River King's skills, too. That is called Fighting River, and it is strong enough to be on par with the Viscount's power. Its strength is that of 500 flowers, so that is a very rare number. So, you support Night Giant God? The gold bunny-eared man smiled. I guess, said the man with the cow head. How about this? Only you and I are earls. I will be number one so there's no point in fighting. How about a wager, then? You bet Night Giant God will win, and I bet on Hansen winning. If Hansen loses, then I will gladly give you the first position, the handsome man said. What if I lose, the cow-headed man calmly asked. If you lose, come and train with me on Planet Thunder, the beautiful man said. Okay. The man with the cow head nodded. Hansen was in front, and there, he saw a dozen people coming after him. He felt depressed, and so he thought. No way. Is Knife Queen really that unpopular? All these Viscounts now want to bully her student? This is so not fair. Fortunately, Hansen was prepared. He had the teeth rabbit shoes. He wasn't going at full speed, but now that the Viscounts were nearing, he sped up a bit. Hansen decided to get the number one spot, so he could get the reward first. Chapter 1861 Moon Palace with a Moon Hey, what happened? His speed is increasing. A dozen Viscounts were trying to stop Hansen, and they had all managed to get very close to him. But now, at that range, they were finding it getting more and more difficult to close the gap. He can run even faster than this? Not bad for a Baron, I suppose. But it is naive to think this will be enough to shake off a Viscount. A Viscount smiled as he accelerated. The dozen Viscounts moved as if they were activating jetpacks. Together, they sped up towards Hans Sr. The distance separating the barons and viscounts cannot be closed. The fitness is too much to compensate for. It would be shocking enough for the fastest baron to have a speed in the 500 flower range. But even so, the slowest of viscounts are above 1,000 flowers. Skills won't be enough to close that gap. 
The beautiful man smiled. The next second, though, the beautiful man was shocked. When the Viscount started to speed up, Hansen was able to speed up yet again. He managed to maintain the distance between himself and the others. How is it possible for a baron to run so quickly? Is he really just a baron? Since when did Queen excel in the teaching of skills that benefit those wishing to flee a fight? This speed is so f asterisk king fast. Not even Viscounts are able to catch up with him. Still, I wonder how long he can keep that up? This is interesting. The races that watched the Narrow Moon livestream were showing extreme interest. They were no longer complaining that the events were boring. The beautiful man was shocked, and he said, I cannot believe a baron can possess such speed. It must be some secret technique he has learned. The man with the cow head did not speak. He just kept running. This is strange. How is he able to run so fast? The Viscount behind gritted his teeth. He couldn't get dosed to Han Sr. I told you guys it would be beneficial to learn a speed geno art. You guys said the abilities of flight were useless. Now watch me. A rebate Viscount that had practiced speed went at an even faster pace. The wind at his back left trails like a blitzing jetpack. His legs looked like a fiery wheel as he left his own group behind to catch up with Han Sr. Wind assault can only be used in a straight line. It cannot be used in the midst of a fight, but this is perfect for it. Hansen surely can't outrun this. The beautiful man smiled. The Viscount that had practiced wind assault was only 10 meters behind Hansen now. Those watching the live stream were excited that he had almost caught up with Hansen, then shocked to see Hansen increase his speed yet again. The Viscount that was using wind assault was only 10 meters away from Hansen, and he couldn't get any closer. What is this? Can he not catch up? The people watching the stream dropped their glasses. They did not expect this could happen. A baron can possess this sort of speed? That is very powerful. This is so fake. A viscount with wind assault cannot catch up with a baron? There's a problem somewhere here. There is. Normal viscounts cannot dodge wind assault, so how can a baron outrun it? I will say it has something to do with his shoes. They must be some sort of treasure that imbues incredible speed upon its wearer. It must be. But even so, he is just a baron. Even with a high-tier treasure, he shouldn't be able to unlock its true power, right? Normally, a baron cannot activate a superior treasure. The strength he would be given would be that of an ordinary viscount, at best. But this is way too much. If so, I haven't the faintest clue where it might have come from. Everyone was talking about this ravenously. The Moon God Festival had actually become an interesting affair. He is cheating. It is no wonder he has managed to achieve this level of speed. But it is useless to cheat before the absolute speed. The beautiful man felt embarrassed for the presumptuous mistake he had made. He sped up with the desire to stop Hans Sr. The cowhead fellow followed after him. Those two earls shot past the teams and even accelerated to a speed that surpassed the Viscount with wind assault. They were going straight for Hans Sr. SH asterisk T. How many people has Queen managed to offend? Even the Earls are mad at me? Hansen thought Queen had offended a lot of people, and that was why others kept coming after him. But actually, although she did not have many friends, she was an idol for all of the rebate. She was a popular person when it came to socializing. Hansen wasn't overly concerned, though. He increased his speed, wanting first place more than anything. The rewards wouldn't be bad and Hansen figured he'd be needing it. That was why he was trying to claim it. The elders said the reward was a Marquis Xenogeneic armor set. That armor set would be incredibly powerful if it was activated. But even if it wasn't, it would still provide a great boon of defense for any wearer. And on top of that, if he later had no use for the gear, he could just eat it for Xenogeneic points. That prize would be valuable no matter how he decided to use it. The beautiful man thought he could catch up with Hansen easily. But after speeding up, Hansen went even faster. There was nothing he could do to catch up. The asterisk came in. The beautiful man sped up again. As his speed increased yet again, so too did Hansen's. But the Earl was still unable to close the gap and get close enough to Hans Sr. Cheating boy, I'm going to get you. The beautiful man gritted his teeth and shone with a bright green light. A green light dragon enveloped his body and came whooshing forward towards Hans Sr. Hansen increased his speed again, though, and he managed to lose the green light dragon. He was headed straight for Moon Palace. Everyone who was watching the stream had seen the green light dragon pursuing Hansen, 
but Hansen was still able to increase his speed and leave it in the dust. The beautiful man was shocked. He could not believe what was happening, so he gave up on the prospect of chasing Hans. Senator people stared at the live stream in dumbfounded silence for a moment. An earl had used all his strength and still failed to catch a baron. D asterisk M in. What are those shoes? They are overpowered. Someone complimented them. I spurred Duke was shocked by what she was witnessing, and even Isha was transfixed by the shoes. If the shoes were a king-class treasure, a baron should not have been able to activate them. But adding to that, the shoes themselves didn't exactly seem to look like one, either. All the nobles were in shock, staring at the rabbit shoes Hansen was wearing. Hansen was so fast, he arrived at the Moon Palace before everyone else. He went inside the gate and saw some strange moonlight from beyond. The moons were rising in the hall. I wonder how many moons he can raise in there. The people who watched the stream glanced away from their monitors and looked up to Narrow Moon. The moons that were rising could be seen just outside. Chapter 1862 Gino Art in the Moonlight There was no use in watching the live stream now, because the moonlight was like a curtain that obscured everything that lay beyond. Hansen stood inside the palace. He could feel the moonlight going into his skin. His bones and cells felt alive, as if they were being thoroughly cleansed by blessed water. Weird. The power of that moonlight, as Hansen wondered about all this, his jade skin started running. The beams of moonlight drifted toward Hansen and landed on him, as if he were their exact target. Ah, they're the same element. That is why I felt that it was similar to jade skin. Hansen was very happy about this. When the moonlight came through him, his jade skin developed even faster. When the jade skin had become xenogeneic, it looked as if it had gone as far as it could possibly go. But now that he had the benefit of the moonlight, it felt like it was going even further. This made Hansen incredibly happy. When Hansen absorbed that moonlight, the light wasn't reduced. In fact, the luminosity only increased. Within the moonlight, Hansen was also able to see some sort of text that stood out brighter than the rest of the moon's light. When Hansen read it, he noticed that it was a Geno art, but it did not have a title. So, Hansen kept reading it, until he realized that it was something quite similar to Jade Skin. It had not been created by the same entity but the thought process behind it was surprisingly similar. That Geno art inside the moonlight was more suitable for the Geno universe. Jade skin was tuned for the sanctuaries it originated from, after all. It was impossible to tell which of the two was flat out better, and that was because the environment was different. I am so lucky. I was thinking about how I could modify jade skin, and now I have this. Although I cannot copy it directly, it will be perfect if I can find a way to integrate it with jade skin for now. Hansen was so happy, and he did his best to memorize the content of the text he could see above. There was more and more moonlight entering him, and it almost started to feel like water. It was like a liquid, thickly flowing into Hans Sr. Hansen's body was like jade now. He stood within the glow of the moonlight like an eye statue, letting the moonlight penetrate him. His delicate bones were cleansed by the moonlight, making him as squeaky clean as any statue. More and more moonlight bathed his body until his xenogeneic genes started to evolve. Am I going to become a Viscount now? Hansen was super happy with the prospect of this. Although it was the xenogeneic gene of jade skin that was evolving, it was still good enough for him. Recently, Hansen had been wondering about how he might make himself a Viscount, and now it seemed that jade skin would be the trigger. Hansen cast jade skin to absorb as much of the light as was possible. He had to make sure that his body received as much as it could. His other body parts were bathed in the moonlight, but what benefited him most was the xenogeneic body. His jade-looking body began to glow with a halo. It was a sign that he would soon become a Viscount. After becoming a Viscount, Hansen could unleash his xenogeneic powers through smoke, fire, and light. Jade Skin's power could very well be a light element one. Outside of the Moon Palace, moons were rising. Every time a moon rose, the Moon Palace would become brighter. I wonder how many moons he will be able to raise? Isha was looking at the palace with a fond smile. She did not expect that Hansen would be able to raise many, as he was essentially just there to practice. He was only a baron, and he only had knife powers. She didn't expect he'd manage to do too well. With the moon god power, it was very good for an outsider to be able to raise 12 moons. The most a rebate had ever raised was 36. Hansen was not a rebate so Isha would be happy to see him raise 10 moons. You can fight to get a higher rank, 
but not more moons. Twelve moons should be the max an outsider can achieve. Over the past few hundred years, only four or five outsiders have ever been able to raise twelve. The best managed to raise twenty-four, Iceberg Duke said. The nobles and civilians were watching the moon rise keenly. They kept counting, each time a new one rose. One, two, three, four, five. The moons kept rising, and there were now ten of them above the palace. People were shocked. He managed to get ten moons. Hansen is lucky, Night River King commented calmly. He was currently playing chess with Black Moon King. Black Moon King smiled and said, I think he can do more than that. You think he can raise twelve? Night River King said, after moving one of his pieces. More than that, even. Black Moon King's smile did not go anywhere. Night River King was shocked by the assumption, and so he asked Black Moon King, You think he can manage to raise more than twelve moons? I suppose, Black Moon King said. In the past few hundred years, only five outsiders have managed to raise twelve. And there are tens of thousands of competitors this year, Night River King said. Knife Queen selected the boy as her student. She had a reason for making that choice. It wouldn't be all that surprising, Black Moon King said. How about we make a wager? If Hansen can exceed twelve moons, I will give you my dragon steel. If he is unable to, you give me the steel knife. Black Steel managed to get that dragon back knife, so you don't need the steel knife. Night River King smiled. Okay. Black Moon King simply agreed, and then put a black chess piece down on the table. Eleven moons had managed to rise. The next would be the twelfth. To many of the rebate, that would be the max he was expected to achieve. Chapter 1863, Perfect. Twelve moons? Hansen is lucky. Being blessed by moon gods, twelve moons will have made him stronger. Moon, Will King was sipping on a cup of tea as he spoke. Isha smiled. She was satisfied that Han Sound had been able to raise a twelfth moon. Twelve moons? Han Sound is not bad. Of course. Otherwise, Knife Queen would not have taken him as a student. Would you say it is possible for him to achieve more than twelve moons? I am afraid that might be too difficult. Over the course of a few hundred years, only four or five outsiders have been able to achieve twelve moons. The chances of him getting more are too low. As everyone rapidly discussed this, another moon rose up into the sky. Thirteen moons? He broke through the expected threshold. Interesting. Queen really did find herself a special student. Hansen must be something special. He sure has a bevy of good luck. Night River King was in shock. He didn't expect that Hansen could bring up twelve moons. Night River King had lost the dragon steel he had offered in the wager, but he did not mind. He said, I didn't expect Hansen to be this lucky. I will have the dragon steel delivered to planet Black Moon later. Black Moon King smiled and responded by saying, Night River, would you like to make another wager? What else can we bet on? Night River King was shocked by the offer. To see whether or not he can raise 24 moons, Black Moon King said. Black Moon, it sounds to me as if you really admire the boy. Do you honestly believe he is that talented? Black River King looked at Black Moon King with much surprise. Yes, I do, Black Moon responded. Okay. In that case, I will conduct this wager again, and I still want to compete for that steel knife of yours. What would you like? Night River King said quickly. Black Moon King slowly said, a magic steel. Night River King frowned, but he nodded. Fine. Since you have dragon steel, it is pointless to hold on to magic steel. Assuming you win, you can take the magic steel if Hansen is able to raise 24 moons. Okay, then. Black Moon King's lips were smiling. The moons kept on rising, and before long, there were 18 of them hanging in the sky. Wow, there is now 18 of them. He must be all tapped out by now. Whoa, it is still continuing. He's at 19. Interesting. Can this guy really raise 24 moons? Isha was in a good mood, right now. It had been difficult getting him to evolve twice. But after that, she had been satisfied with every result following her expenditure. She was starting to think she had really lucked out by taking him on. But thinking about how to get him to Viscount, Earl, Marquise, and then Duke was something that was giving Isha a bit of a headache. The story of Jean's modifications had not gone well. If Hansen practiced it, it had cost a lot of resources each and every time. Getting him to the level of a baron had already been very hard so she couldn't even comprehend how much it might cost her if she brought him all the way up to Duke. I spurred Duke was surprised Hansound had been so lucky. 
He had 18 moons now. The tally of moons kept rising without slowing down. Eventually, Hansen had reached the prestigious number of 24. I lost. Night River King frowned. Hansen's performance had surprised him a great deal. But this was just the beginning. After the number 24, another moon appeared in the skies above Moon Palace. D asterisk came in. Another moon? 25? He broke the outsider record. Is he insane? Queen really is sharp. He must be the luckiest outsider ever. Still rising. 26. Oh my god. Might he be a rebate just pretending to be an outsider? This is insane. This number is the average of a rebate. Many of the rebate can't even reach this far. It looks like the moon god really fancies him. SH asterisk T. 27. Surely he cannot reach 36. After all the moons that had risen, Narrow Moon was losing its stability. Many people stood up and stared at the moon palace. Oh my god. 30. Many nobles, like Night River King, Black Moon King, and Isha, were all shocked. No one had guessed that it was even possible for Hansen to raise so many moons. The moon god's blessing wasn't normally very too powerful or beneficial, but when you reach that sort of number, the reinforcements turned into something special. Another moon came up, and then Narrow Moon went quiet. It was the 36th. That was the highest any rebate had ever been blessed with. He really did raise 36 moons. He is totally a fake outsider. Many of the rebate had wry smiles. They felt extremely jealous. 36 moons was a very rare number amongst the rebate. He is lucky. Moon Will King took a sip of tea and then let out a lengthy sigh. The next second, he almost choked on the tea in his mouth. Above the palace, another moon came up. The whole of Narrow Moon was quiet. The dukes and everyone there had their mouths open. And yet, no one spoke. Impossible. Night River King suddenly stood up. He stared at the Moon Palace's 37th moon. Isha was shocked, as well. 36 plus 1 moon was something no rebate had ever seen before, across a million years. Everyone thought 36 was the highest he could achieve, but what they had just witnessed told them that it wasn't. I spurred Duke wore a complex expression on her face. Her mouth was open wide, and she looked to be in disbelief. This is madness. Moon Palace now had 37 moons overhead. Someone couldn't help but scream. All the nobles felt very conflicted, especially those of the rebate. They were so proud of this festival, but now their pride in it was waning. The person who had been able to raise the most moons in the festival's history was no longer a rebate, and that was just the start of the insanity. All the nobles were shocked, confused, and also suspicious. Another moon arose in the sky. Chapter 1864, Moon God's Lesson. Seventy-two moons were out in the sky. It was an incredibly pretty sight. The whole of Narrow Moon was silent. The elites like Isha and Moon Will King were completely speechless. They had watched each moon rise. The rebate had only ever managed to reach 36 moons, but that prestigious number had not just been beaten, it had been doubled. No one had seen this before. After that, though, no more moons rose. It brought the nobles a modicum of relief. If it kept going, they were going to doubt everything they had thought true in their lives. Boom. Just as everyone thought Hans Sin's blessings had come to an end, the 72 moons atop Moon Palace shone with exuberant brilliance. Basking in the glow of 72 casts of moonlight, Moon God Palace was luminous. The cells in Hans Sin's body rapidly began to change, as a result. Bz's T. His bones screamed. The moonlight came out of Han Sen's body, like a robe to completely wrap him up. He was like a moon king. Gino Body Jade Skin has ascended to Viscount class. The same time this occurred, another noise shot through Han Sen's mind. It gave him a shock. He had received a body that was Viscount class. He could now cast energy on the outside. When Jade Skin reached Viscount status, the moonlight across the palace was finally reduced. His body began to go back to normal. Quickly, the moonlight around Moon God Palace began to evaporate until there was nothing left. Hansen was left standing in the hall, looking up at the 72 moons. Suddenly, they started to shine again like suns. Boom. The 72 moons began shining back down into the hall, with a focus on one spot in particular. Due to the moonlight being focused, people could now see into the hall. Everyone saw Hansen, standing inside. And the 72 beams of moonlight weren't coming down on him but on a spot that was about three steps ahead. 
The moonlight looked tangible and solid, and inside those concentrated beams stood a woman. Looking a little closer, however, it was apparent that she was only a shadow. She did not look real. The lady looked at Han Sin and pointed with her slender finger. She pointed it at Han Sin's forehead, then began moving her lips. No noise came from her mouth, but a voice sounded in the heads of all. By the name of Moon God, I bless you. It does not matter which race you hail from, for you are the son of the moon. You will be guided and protected by the power of the moon. The moonlight on her finger went straight between Han Sen's eyebrows. It spread out across his head, then cleansed the entirety of his body. After that, the pretty woman smiled at him. Her body faded away, and the moons became dim and disappeared. Everyone in Narrow Moon had their mouths open. Only one thought ran through their minds. That was a genuine moon god blessing. The ones before weren't anything like that, and moon god never revealed herself. They weren't blessings then. This is the proper moon god blessing. He is qualified to earn the title of son of the moon. Why am? After all these years, we rebate never once received a proper moon god blessing like this. And now, it's an outsider who got one. I wonder what the effects of a true moon god blessing are. He earned the title son of the moon, and she told him he was protected by the moon. Even so, he should still walk out as a low rank. Who knows? We will have to ask Hansen ourselves. He is the only one who has ever received such a blessing. I don't think Moon will King and Isha know what this stuff is about, either. Isha looked at Hansen strangely as she walked out of the palace. Aside from a troublesome Gino art, her student was practically perfect. But that Gino art would be harmful, and even Isha herself did not think it was possible to bring it up to King class. If he succeeds, this King class Gino art will be the scariest ever. Isha glanced around nervously. Hansen's performance made her want to train him well, but the thought of the resources required to bring him up still gnawed at her. Especially if she was to bring him up to king class. She didn't think it was something she could realistically afford. Iceberg Duke looked as if she had a conflicted mind. She did not understand why Hansen was so special. He had been taken in by Queen and found a king class weapon. He had now just received the true blessing of Moon God. It looked like everything good in the world happened to him, and him alone. He was far too lucky. Was he a virgin in ten previous lives to receive so much luck now? I spurred Duke wondered. Night River King and Black Moon King were in shock as well. They were both thinking, Queen's student got a king class weapon and the moon god's blessing. He also has those weirdly brilliant shoes. Did he save the entire universe in his past life? This guy's luck is scary. He is overpowered. Nah, it's nothing. He's just lucky. If I had his luck, I'd be even more overpowered. The nobles and commoners spoke about these matters a lot. While many were jovial about it, many expressed only jealousy. Hansen didn't think much about it, but eventually, he walked out of the palace. He wanted to teleport back to Planet Blade. He wanted to research the Geno art in the moonlight. But outside the palace, many people had gathered. They were all looking at Hansen, and unless he chose to fly above them, his way was completely blocked. Excuse me. Hansen blinked, and the young ones that had joined the festival woke up from their days. Hansen, fight me. You cannot run now. Night Giant God was holding a knife that was as big as a door. He was pointing it at Han Sr. The other young ones surrounded Hansen, refusing to let him run off this time. They wanted to witness the performance of the first person to ever receive the Moon God blessing. Fight. Fight. The people who were watching the live stream were all chanting. They wanted to see a fight too. But of course, no matter how loudly they shouted, Hansen wouldn't hear it. Chapter 1865 Breaking Their Knives and Not Hurting the People Hansen did not plan on escaping this time. He had already achieved first place here, so there was little to worry about. Now it was time for him to show off the knife skills that Isha had taught him. Isha had been teaching him teeth knife for a while, and by now, that was what he was best at. Now he needed to perform what he had learned well in order to avoid disappointing her. If he made her happy, it was only expectable that he would receive more resources from her. So, this next move would be more important than anything. He gripped his ghost teeth knife as he ran towards Night Giant God. He was holding the hilt, but the weapon was still inside its sheath. He hadn't drawn it. Good timing. Night Giant God shouted as he swung his own knife with greater strength. His Geno art was called Battle River. It was a water geno art. Water geno arts were usually quite soft, 
and they had a sense of infinity about them. They were usually quite effective against something hard. But Battle River was different. It was a really rough water Geno art that was like a river coming down from the sky. It was the strongest strike, and that was just the beginning. Backed by the knife skills of the rebate, his attack would be so fast and so strong. No one at the same level would be able to block him. Hansen did not plan on escaping. He slashed with Ghost Teeth Knife, and he used Teeth Knife skills to perform the technique Tooth for a Tooth. This was different from Tusk. This move changed depending on the opponent. If the foe was cruel, then it'd be cruder than them. If the foe was hard, then it would be harder than them. If the foe was obscene, it would be obsceneer than them. Night Giant God was striking very hard, and so Hansen did the same thing. There was no way around this. They are going for a direct collision with each other. Night Giant God was born powerful. He has 500 flowers despite being a baron. Very few people can fight him. Although he does not have a king-class weapon, I don't think it matters all that much. Hansen himself can't cast the king-class power of his weapon, after all, someone who knew Night Giant God said. Dong. Ghost Teeth Knife and Night Giant God's knife came against each other. The thin and curved Ghost Teeth Knife, coming against the large knife of the opposition, did not look appropriately scaled. But the purple blade of Ghost Teeth cleaved right into the big knife. It shattered the big knife, sending fragments flying everywhere. Ghost Teeth Knife did not stop. It kept coming forward towards Night Giant God. When it was less than one inch away from his head, just about brushing his hair, the knife stopped dead. Night Giant God's eyes were open wide, and sweat broke out across his brow. He did not dare to move at all. Hansen smiled. He put the knife away and walked right past Night Giant God. You only won because you have a king-class weapon. I will fight you. Another baron appeared. He moved like a ghost and tried to attack Hansen's neck with a dagger. But within a second, his dagger was also broken. A few other barons came at Hansen at the same time, prompting him to move. But wherever Ghost Teeth Knife went, a broken weapon would follow in its wake. No one's weapon could withstand the strike of that knife. Powerful, that teeth knife skill is, the beautiful man said in compliment. The man with the head of a cow replied, he is a powerful man. Hansen kept on swinging his blade fearlessly. If any baron came close, he'd break their weapon. He was not killing anyone, though. He'd simply break their knives, and that was it. If he did start killing, the entirety of Narrow Moon would likely consider him an enemy. The barons could not stop Hansen's advance. And before long, it was a Viscount that tried him next. The sword of the Viscount came at him like a shadow. The sword light became a flash of light that weaved a net of strikes to attack Hansen all at once. This was a rebate skill known as Moon Shadow Slash. Hansen kept on moving not slowing down as he came towards the sword net. He used a teeth slash towards the Viscount. The Viscount was shocked by the boldness, because Hansen was now moving toward where Moon Shadow slash actually began. The net was just an illusion, and it wasn't where the actual sword was going to strike. It was too late for him to withdraw his sword, too. So, the Viscount committed to the slash, as the sword light came down on Hansen's ghost teeth knife. Katcha. A large chunk was carved out of the Viscount's sword. This wasn't because the ghost teeth knife was sharp and hard. Dog teeth was based on the concept of a heavy strike. Many rebate used this skill, as it was infamous for destroying popular swords. Many king-class weapons were missing chunks due to this technique. And seeing that the Viscount was unable to block Hansen, many other Viscounts swept forward to stop him. They were afraid he'd run off again. But this time, Hansen was not planning to run. He had achieved first place already, and now was the time to show off. The better he performed, the more resources Ishan might be willing to give him. This was his best chance of securing valuables. He had Isha as backup, anyway. He wasn't afraid anyone could actually do something to him. Hansen used his knife to fight many nobles, all alone. The barons had stopped, so it was mostly just the Viscounts that were fighting him now. Hansen did not use his Viscount Jade Skin, though. He maintained his Baron class for the fight. He didn't use his Teeth Rabbit Shoes, either. He was only using his ghost teeth knife to fight back against the Viscounts. It looks like Knife Queen recruited him a long time ago. How long she's been training him, God only knows. But it would take a decade for him to reach this sort of level. Night River King hummed. Isha was shocked, too. She knew exactly how long she had been teaching him. Hansen had only been with her for a few months. She had not taught him for long at all. The last skill he learned was eight days ago. 
It was shocking that Hansen could use teeth knife with that level of proficiency. Is he a knife master? Isha had a complicated look. Hansen's performance kept on surprising her. As a teacher, she was very lucky to have such a student. She had only taken him on in a bet to find out where Dollar might be, but she felt like having him as a student was not a negative thing at all. Should I expect more from him? Isha wondered. But whenever she did, the thought of the story of Jeans would return and give her a headache. He is good at teeth knife, yes, but he is not one of the rebate. It is difficult for him to use teeth power. Even though he is good at it, it is still a waste. Moon Will King felt ashamed. Seeing that the Viscounts could not block Hansen and no one could strike, it seemed likely Hansen would be able to escape. The beautiful man then decided to teleport in front of Hans Senator. His bone knife was forged from dragon bones. He slashed towards Hans Sr. Chapter 1866, Son of the Moon. Bullsh asterisk T. Why did he join the fight? An earl fighting a baron? What is this? An old man that was of a higher rank saw the beautiful man step into the fight. This displeased him a lot. When most average people saw this, however, they did not mind. In fact, they were quite excited to see the beautiful man fight. Gouji's attacking. His dragon sun knife skill is a dragon moan, and not even Viscounts can withstand something like that. Hansen will surely suffer now. Haha. Uh -huh. It'll be good to squash this outsider's reputation. If this hadn't occurred, this entire Moon God's festival would have been a show. Knife Queen is so powerful. She selected a very powerful student. It may be difficult, being a baron, but his luck and talents are very good. Of course. It sounds like you guys thought she only picked him because he's good looking. It's true that he doesn't look bad. He is suitable to earn respect amongst the beauty of the rebate. But when compared with us, he is only average. There are many more handsome, rebate men that far exceed him. It is fine if he loses to Gaoji. He has done well. The nobles and the commoners were talking. Isha, Moonwheel King, and Night River King were in absolute shock. Gaoji's dragon moan was shocking. It was capable of freezing Viscounts on the spot. But Hansen had proven resilient to it, and he was not affected. Hansen still gripped his knife. And just as the copper knife was about to hit him, he drew out his ghost teeth knife. Seeing ghost teeth knife about to slice open Gao Ji's neck, the observers still had to remember that earls were earls. Their speed and reaction times were too fast to comprehend. A green dragon of light swiftly appeared to swallow Gao Ji's body. Dong! Ghost teeth knife hit the green dragon's shadow. Hansen tried his hardest, but he was unable to break the shadow of that dragon. Hansen did not put his knife away, though. He still used his knife to release a purple mist right next to the green shadow. Gaoji frowned. He had used his green shadow dragon's power to shake Hansen away from him. The moonlight of Narrow Moon was like water. The moonlight shone on Hansen, bathing him in its glow. He was getting stronger, and Gaoji couldn't do anything to get away from him. Ghost Teeth Knife was still mauling the green dragon shadow. Within that moonlight, Hansen's strength continued to rise. Still, he hadn't accumulated the strength necessary to overcome his opponent. The moonlight buff was strong, though, and Gao Ji continued to use his green dragon shadow, though he still wasn't succeeding in shaking Hansen loose. D asterisk N and N. A moonlight buff. Is that a blessing of the moon god? It must be. Did you not hear the moon god say that Hansen is the son of the moon? Wherever there is a moon, he will earn a buff by it. That is way too strong. It has buffed a baron enough to compete against an earl. This is too incredible to believe. Maybe, but it obviously isn't fake. This is Narrow Moon, and there is an abundance of moons. The buffs Hansen can receive here are very strong. Anyone of the same tier who tries to fight him here must have a death wish. Does that mean Narrow Moon has become Hansen's territory? Yes. Otherwise, he would not have been given the title Son of the Moon. Gaoji looked glum, unable to shake Hansen away. So, he decided to go on the offensive and slash towards his opponent. His knife carried a green dragon light and a dragon bone. Hansen did not think his title would bear such significance. The moonlight power there was far too strong, so much so that it allowed him to do battle with an earl. Hansen did not retreat. He used tooth for a tooth and struck towards the green dragon light. Ghost teeth knife came against the fully powered green dragon knife, and still, it managed to block the green dragon knife. They stopped right there, with both knives repeatedly colliding with each other. Catcha. A crack appeared on the green dragon knife, 
which then began to expand and spread across the shadow of the green dragon. It made the green dragon shadow start to look like a shattered mirror. Dong. Ghost teeth knife and the green copper knife came against each other again. Gao Ji had to withdraw his green copper knife and reluctantly fall back. His powers were less than the moonlight buff given to Han Sr. Gao Ji looked cold. He swung his knife with a desire to fight, but his face changed when he saw his own blade. Ghost teeth knife had dealt a crack to the green copper knife. And soon after, the crack started to spread until the green copper knife was wrought with an entire web of cracks. This is Isha stood up from her seat. With wide eyes, she intently observed the cracks that were rapidly manifesting across the green copper knife. Isha, Moonwheel King, and Night River King, who knew about teeth powers, suddenly felt their faces grow pale. They couldn't believe what they were witnessing. No way. Night River King looked to be in shock, and he could do nothing but stare at the green copper knife. Katcha. Gaoji swung his knife again, but when he put the green dragon light into the green copper knife, there was a sound. And then, the green copper knife shattered into pieces. It was reduced into nothing but bits, surrounded by a horrible purple mist. Teeth power. Everyone had those two words form in their mind. But even still, it was hard to believe that it was true. That was the rebate's strongest geno art. It was the strongest skill the entire race of the rebate possessed. Not many could practice that, not even amongst the rebate. But now, an outsider had just used teeth power to defeat a rebate earl in battle. The rebate could not believe this was happening. Everyone knew Knife Queen was good with teeth knife, and everyone knew Hansen was her only student. Everyone knew Hansen practiced teeth knife, but no one thought, or even dreamed, Hansen could successfully use teeth powers. In the hearts of the rebate, learning teeth power would place you amongst the most talented of the whole race. Now, the glory and pride had been crushed by Han Senator that Strike had made all the rebates shocked. They could not even think straight. It is no wonder that Knife Queen took him as a student. It wasn't just for fun. Night River King looked dim. An outsider can use teeth power, and that person is Knife Queen's student. Is he good or bad for Narrow Moon? Moon Will King was in shock, too. Isha was the one who was shocked the most, though. Her mind had yet to return to her. How could he have practiced teeth power? Chapter 1867 You make this difficult super gene. The Moon God Festival had become boring. The young ones went to the Moon God Palace to accept their blessings, but they were only able to raise up to the 36 moons, individually. This was supposed to be a number of extreme pride, but now it seemed rather pathetic. Once they had seen the true Moon God Blessing, their own Moon God Blessings seemed almost fake. This wasn't because they were neither good nor lucky, it had nothing to do with it. But without the moon god appearing, no matter how lucky or strong you were, you did not possess the true blessing. Hansen's jade skin had its origins in the Frost Sutra. It had a connection to the moon god, which was why he received the blessings he did. It didn't actually have anything to do with Hansen's luck or strength. Before long, the moon god festival came to an end. Hansen, receiving the marquee's armor he had come for, was overwhelmed with sheer delight. The festival had now finished. But Hansen's performance had swiftly become a hot topic. Everyone knew about what had transpired. Inside the meeting hall in the full moon offices, a few of the elderly and the kings of Narrow Moon had assembled. Frowning and looking upset, Isha said, Why can't we give Hansen a spot in the moon? Garden? Is he not talented enough? Or is my student simply not qualified? The elders did not speak. Neither did they dare look directly at Isha. Night River King said, it is not because we do not want to, it's simply because the rebate's law only permits the acceptance of a rebate. I don't recall the Moon Garden ever having such a rule. Didn't they once accept an outsider, back in the era long ago? Isha said emotionlessly. After that, the faces of the elders and elites all changed. Moon Will King groaned and said, Queen, you know what happened to the last outsider, don't you? If he is not of the same race, he is different. It does not matter how talented or lucky he is, the fact remains that he will never be a rebate. Yes. Haven't you heard the story of the mother rebate raising a baby wolf, only to be killed by her child once it had grown up? Night River King said, Queen, you should really understand what we are telling you. If your student was one of the rebate, we'd give you as many slots as you were able to take. Exactly. You should take another student if you do not approve. We'll give your next a slot, for sure. 
The elders and the elite tried convincing each other not to give Hansen a spot in the moon garden. Isha frowned. She was knife queen, yes, but she was not a dictator that could orchestrate every working of their society. Without the approval of the elders, she would be unable to provide a spot for Hansen in the moon garden. Moon Garden was a training organization that belonged to the rebate. Everyone who got in had the possibility of becoming a deified elite, or at least a champion. Of course, they hadn't produced any deified elites in a while. But there were many general elites. Even Knife Queen herself had gone through the training offered there. Out of all the kings present, only Moon Will King that had secured such prestige without having first spent time in Moon Garden. Entering Moon Garden meant you'd be able to enjoy all the resources available to the rebate. Making Hansen a duke would be difficult, but it was fortunate that with Isha's support, it wouldn't be too problematic. It was simply a shame that Hansen was not one of the rebate. She had tried to secure him a spot in Moon Garden, but no matter how she pleaded, his acceptance would not be approved. Hansen returned the planet blade. He waited for half a day for Isha to finally arrive and meet with him. Isha had just returned from full moon office, and meeting with him now was her next order of business. Queen, did you enjoy my performance? Hansen bowed. Isha sighed at Hansen and said, Hansen, your performance puts me in a difficult situation. Why? Did I perform poorly? Hansen asked. No. In fact, it was too good. Let me ask you, how did you get the teeth power? Isha asked Hans Sr. It is because I practiced it. Teeth power is similar to the powers of Ghost Teeth Knife. I used Ghost Teeth Knife to practice every day, and somehow, through that, I happened to learn it. Hansen stayed very calm when she asked about this. No one would be able to find out the truth, so he exerted confidence in his answers. Isha didn't look suspicious, either. She knew such things might be impossible to explain, anyway. How is your practice with the story of genes coming along? Isha asked him. It's going rather slowly, Hansen answered. This was true. When Hansen leveled up as the story of genes, it had indeed gone very slow. He did not know how long it might take to make him a viscount with that. Isha pulled out a bottle and gave it to Hans Sr. This bottle contains xenogeneic materials gathered from viscount class xenogeneics. It is a geno fluid, and it should be good in leveling you up and bringing you up to the class of viscount. Eat 10 grams of this every 10 days. And when you do, immediately cast the story of genes. Once you have finished, come along and get some more. Thank you very much. Hansen was so happy, and he thought to himself, my performance really was good. Look at this. I've received some goodies already. Now, you get going. You've still got to develop Planet Eclipse, in addition to all the training you have before you. Isha waved and let Hansen go. The Geno fluid, if it was used by a Baron, it could make him a Viscount. It could possibly make two Viscounts. But when used on Hansen, Isha knew it probably wouldn't be as effective. Instead, it would only help him inch his way closer to the threshold. It wouldn't be enough for him to level up completely. We will see how he behaves, Isha thought to herself in her heart. Back on Planet Eclipse, Hansen was not in a rush to drink that Geno fluid. In fact, he was keen to research the Geno art he had learned while inside Moon God Palace first and foremost. Jade skin was a Geno art from the sanctuaries. This was something that quite similar. It was like the Geno universe counterpart of Jade skin. They did not have a connection, but with Hansen's prior knowledge of Jade skin, it should make practice of that Geno art fairly easy. Hansen did not plan on practicing it, though. He still wanted to focus on Jade skin. He just wanted to absorb the essence of the other and assimilate it with Jade skin, while he continued on with his original art. Now that Hansen could unleash power, he had to be able to gather up spirit successfully. If he did that, he could evolve his xenogenic bones and become an Earl. Like Earl Gaoji, that man's spirit had been a green dragon. Judging from the way that Geno art was practiced, it must have had a special technique that allowed for the gathering of spirit. Absorbing light element treasures would allow for easier gatherings of spirit. Chapter 1868 Black Cliff Wish Super Gene The moon itself did not glow. It borrowed the power of the sun to glow. The moon that provided the Geno art was the same. Its light was used to light up one spirit, and it worked very well. But it was hard to find light treasure. For now at least, Hansen did not know of a location in which he could find something like that. According to the moon god Geno art, the different light treasures he absorbed would affect the sort of spirit he summoned. 
It would affect its element and even its shape. I wonder if I can find a good treasure here on Planet Eclipse? If I'm unable to, I'll have to head back out there in search of one, Hansen thought. But for now, Hansen was planning on scouring the reaches of Planet Eclipse for one. He had skills, teeth, rabbit shoes, and Marquis armor to stay alive. He should have no problem doing battle with a duke in such a condition. Hansen took out 10 grams of the geno fluid he had been given by Isha, and then he swallowed it. Then, he felt an energy begin to flow and spread throughout his body. It took around five hours for it to be fully absorbed. The spells he had definitely felt improved, so it was clear to him that Isha was not skimping, and she was giving him some good stuff. He felt the energy spread out across all of his body, and he made sure to use the story of genes during the absorption process. Hansen did not feel any negative side effects to the consumption of it, but he didn't use any more. He was going to follow Isha's commands and take the small dosage of the stuff every 10 days. Much good news came from the base those days, too. The ordinary women were starting to become barons, and by now, there were four of them. The gold raven mark works. It is a shame the kids are just too young. They haven't been able to generate Geno armor yet. If they all became barons, I'd have a mighty workforce, Hansen thought to himself. Still, he went ahead to establish a school to better educate the women and kids. He also had a school to teach them about combat and geno arts. Inside a cave on Black Moon Planet, a fire flared upwards like a water spring. A rebate with black ears was naked and drenched in sweat. His muscles shone in the glow of the fire. Dong, dong, dong. The big man was swinging a black steel hammer. When it struck the red hot steel, a flurry of sparks erupted. Slowly, the hot steel was taking on the shape of a knife. The big man ran water along it eventually, then examined it closely. He looked disappointed, and then he threw it away. The knife ended up on a mountain of other knives. He spoke to himself, saying, No, this material cannot be used to make a knife blank. It is too poor. After that, the man picked up another hunk of ore and threw it into the fire. It was more material for forging. When the man failed again, the ground split in two. Flames rose from the earth and the place was becoming so hot, even the rocks started to melt. The big man frowned and looked into the fire. He had been there for a long time, but he had never seen the fire behave that way. Just as he started to step closer and see what had happened, the fire took on the shape of a fire spirit. What are you? The big man frowned. Black Cliff, do you wish to forge a real knife? The fire spirit used a decidedly vague voice. Of course. Otherwise, why would I have waited here for over a decade? Black Cliff said simply, If you make a wish to me, I can help you forge the strongest knife in existence. The fire spirit's voice still sounded so vague. That's all right. I will use my own hands to forge the strongest knife. Black Cliff rejected the offer and looked confident in himself. But you lack the proper materials. If you make a wish, I can find you the best or that there is, the fire spirit continued. You can help me find materials? Black Cliff looked at the fire spirit intently. Yes, of course. I am a god who knows everything. It is easy to locate what you need. If you ask, I will help, the fire spirit said arrogantly. Why are you helping me? Black Cliff frowned. Because you yourself want to be considered a god. So, make the strongest knife and become a god. Your desire for this has touched me, the flame spirit said. Black Cliff did not believe the entity, but he really wanted the materials. He wanted them more than anything. So, he looked at the spirit and said, Okay, if you find me the materials, I will pay you back. You do not have to pay me back. Your loyalty is my best reward. The fire spirit looked incredibly happy. The fire spirit looked happy, and then the fire erupted again into a giant wall of flame. Black Cliff's eyes were on fire, too. Go to Planet Eclipse and find Han Senator. He has precisely what you need. It is a knife blank that you want. The flames of the fiery spirit looked angry. Planet Eclipse. Hansen. Knife blank. Black Cliff's eyes burned. Although the fire on the ground was gone, the fire in his eyes remained. It was half a month after the festival now, and Hansen was pretty much done with the moon god Geno art. His jade skin had become Viscount, and it had been successfully modified. So, it should have been fine for Hansen to practice with now. The other parts still needed to be fixed but he hadn't reached there yet. He couldn't just jump over to fix it. Old Han, what are you doing? Xie Qing King pushed open the doors. Practicing a Geno art. 
You, Hansen raised his head and drifted off as he stared at Xie Qing King. Ha ha, I have become a Viscount. Cool, uh huh? Xie Qing King looked cocky. That is very nice. Hansen gave him a thumbs up. Although he had provided Xie Qing King many xenogenic genes to make leveling up a little easier, it still felt like it was too fast. He became a Viscount because of the Gold Raven power. Without that power, there's no way he could have leveled up that quickly, Gu Qiqing spoke as she approached. When Hansen saw her, he realized she had become a Viscount, too. They didn't hide this fact, so it was easy to learn. Not bad. The Gold Raven mark was pretty good. But it was just a one-time thing, and it is gone now. Xie Qing King licked his lips. Well, what lucky timing for you guys to become Viscounts. I'm planning on hunting up in the mountains. Would you like to go? Hansen asked with a smile. Chapter 1869, The Red Mist in the Valley Deep in the mountains on planet Eclipse, Hansen, Xie Qing King, Gu Qicheng, and Little Silver were traveling. After Xie Qing King and Gu Qicheng became Viscounts, Little Silver became one, too. Now Hansen was depressed. Little Angel, zero, and he had not been infected. If they had, it was likely they could have leveled up to Viscount with much greater ease. They wouldn't have needed to practice half as much. The environment is stable for now, at least. Why don't we bring more people to this universe, so we can grow and cultivate them? It will be impossible for us to become famous here with only a handful of people. Hansen was deep in thought. Hansen could recruit many from the Alliance, but there were a few he did not feel safe with. One such person was Wang Yuhang. Hansen was afraid that if he came here, the man would bring terrible luck down on him. Because Han Sound had provided many xenogenic genes to his friends and followers, certain people in the sanctuaries had developed very quickly. But he had made sure to only provide such things to those who were close to him. Hansen's resources were limited, and he couldn't fill the needs of everybody he knew. With the help of xenogenic genes, though, many humans and creatures from the Fourth God Sanctuary had made it to the Alliance. That included Dragon Lady, Death Goddess, Red Pony, and Little Star. They had successfully ascended to the Alliance universe. The humans who had successfully ascended included Queen, Lin Feng, Wang Yuhang, Tang Jinliu, and Yi Dongmu. They were waiting to go to the Xenogenic universe now. Ji Yin and and Luolan had eaten so many Xenogenic genes that they too had ascended to the Alliance. But Hansen wasn't yet willing to let them cross the divide. He was afraid that if they were there, they'd cause a big problem for him with their attempts to find Little Flower. The advantage of creatures from the sanctuaries was that they could level up rather quickly by consuming xenogenic genes. Their biggest letdown, however, was the fact that their genes were unstable. There was no telling what a creature might eventually become. A xenogenic that looked like a leopard came prowling out of the mountains. Gu Chung, with her sword air, killed it in a single strike. Gu Qingqing's powers were of sword air and not sword light. Her green sword air was weird, and it resembled something like silk. She could kill enemies at all manners of strange angles. Save me some. Xie Qing King blurted, clutching his silver book. You are too slow, Gu Qingqing said, as she was in the process of cutting up the xenogenic body and harvesting the xenogenic genes. Xie Qing King did not say a word, and he merely closed his silver book. Hansen looked at Xie Qing King. Xie Qing King's Geno armament and power had been consistently surprising to Hansen, and they had interested him quite a bit. After Xie Qing King leveled up to become a Viscount, he had been able to use his silver light to draw pictures on the pages of his book. Whatever he drew could come to life, right out of the parchment. He could practically summon beasts to fight alongside him. But the shadows he drew did have limitations. For one thing, he couldn't pre draw a creature then cast it when the time for battle came. So, he had to draw his desired summons during battle, and that took time. With Gu Qingqing there, though, he couldn't draw anything fast enough to fight. By the time he finished drawing something, she'd have killed the Xenogeneic already. It was something that didn't make him very happy. Hansen was happy, though. He wasn't interested in Baron or Viscount Xenogeneics. He wanted to find light treasure. What is this? Xia Qing King looked up to the mountain, Confusion etched across his face. Hansen followed Xie Qing King's gaze, and they examined a red mist hanging across the mountain. But the mist hadn't come from the sky. It arose from the mountain itself, and it looked rather weird. Perhaps we should go and take a look. There could be treasure. Hansen's eyes shone brightly. Careful. 
we are only Viscounts, remember. If we encounter a Duke or a Marquise, only Hansen has a Duke Beast's sole pair of shoes that he can use to run. We lack such things, Gu Chiching said. Do I look like the type to run off and abandon you? Hansen was hurt by the comments. Yes. Xie Qing King and Gu Chiching answered sincerely. Hansen shrugged his shoulders and picked up Little Silver. Carefully, he snuck towards the place he had seen. The red mist was like a cloud, but it rippled like a living fire. It was a stunning sight. After the three of them got close, they found that the red mist was rising from a valley. The valley, filled up with that mist, looked like heaven. What might have lurked beyond the strange vapor, however, was something they could not see. Should we go in and take a look? Gu Chiching looked down into the valley and frowned. She could not see anything. The red mist was too thick for their eyesight to penetrate. It didn't actually hurt their eyes, but it did stop them from looking at what was inside. I don't know what lies inside. I'd wager it is too dangerous to go in, though. Even with teeth rabbit shoes, Hansen did not want to take the risk. He was still too weak, and carelessness could cost him his life. Now you can watch me. Xie Qing King spoke with absolute confidence. He summoned his silver book and began casting with his wonderful silver light. He was scribbling something rather quickly. Within a second, the shadow of a silver leopard leaped out from the pages of the book. It looked exactly like the one Gu Qiqing had just killed. This one was just a silver shadow, though. It wasn't comprised of actual flesh. You can draw anything you like with this book? Hansen asked with surprise. Yes, but they only stay around temporarily for now. I can only draw creatures that exist in the universe, too. The drawing has to be pretty accurate to generate the creature, as well. After Xie Qing King said that, he commanded that the leopard head into the valley. If you draw a king-class Xenogeneic, would it have king-class power? Hansen asked. Of course not. The shadow's power depends on the caster's strength mind. That being said, some of the creatures I have drawn can carry their own element. Still, the power scales back in comparison to me, Xie Qin King explained. Whoa, that is already so very good. Hansen looked at Xie Qin King strangely. Xie Qin King was a man with a very bad temper. It was strange to see him take to drawing in a fight instead of immediately using his fists. Roar. The leopard had been inside the mist for a while when an awful screech was heard. Then, nothing. The valley returned to silence. Xie Qin King's face changed. The leopard drawing in the book was shattered. What happened? Hansen asked Xie Qin King. I don't know, but I have a connection with the shadow. I can feel what they feel, but I cannot see through their eyes. After he entered the mist, something killed him quickly, Xie. Qin King said. Chapter 1870 an enemy that cannot be seen. Hansen and Gu Qiqing frowned. The shadow Xie Qing King had drawn had possessed the power of a Viscount. It had been destroyed within one second, so whatever lurked inside the valley was scary. There is no need to rush. Watch this. Xie Qing King flipped open his book and drew something else with his fingertips. Not long after, another leopard came leaping out of the pages. It didn't run straight into the valley and instead came to heel and crouched near Xie Qing King. Xie Qing King kept wagging his finger across the book, and after a few minutes, another four leopards joined the first. When done, he said, okay, this is the maximum I can do. He commanded the five leopards to enter the mist of the valley, all in a horizontal line. Each leopard ran forward at the same time, all together, but they kept a few yards of space between them. When they entered the valley, there was a movement from within the fog. But then, all too quickly, the valley echoed with the sounds of squealing again. The red mist of the valley rumbled and swirled as the pictures on Xie Qing King's book began to disappear, one after another. Within a mere few seconds, the pictures of all the leopards had been erased. It likely indicated that the shadows that had been spawned and sent into the mist had been destroyed. Xie Qing King's face turned pale. The death of the leopards meant nothing to him but he had exerted a lot of his own energy by summoning so many. That had cost him a lot. So, did you find out what's going on inside the valley? Hansen asked Xie Qing King, looking right at him. Xie Qing King told him, I don't know what's going on. I didn't see anything. But when the leopards were killed, one second elapsed between each death. So I assume the leopards were all killed by a single entity. I can also guess that if a creature can kill my shadows so quickly, the creature must have four times our potential speed. It could be an earl or higher, but with a hidden power. 
If it is an earl, that's nothing to sweat about. I have the teeth rabbit shoes, remember? The speed of those is no worse than an earl, and I also have the new Marquis Xenogeneic armor. I may not be able to activate its full potential, but it can most certainly protect me from the attacks of an earl. Hansen looked up to the sky and noticed another magnetic storm that was raging. He could not see the moons of Narrow Moon from where he was, so it was unlikely he'd be gifted their strength. Wait here. Gu Qingqing stopped Hansen, who was on the verge of entering himself. She pulled out pure, and a green aura danced across the blade. Then, the sword came alive in a swirl and flew forward into the valley. Dong! Pure flew right into the mist, and shortly after, a crunchy noise sounded. Then, Pure flew back out and right back into Gu Qingqing's hands. My sword was attacked once, Gu Qingqing said, then sheathed the weapon. Okay, I'll go and take a look. Hansen donned his marquee's armor and put on his rabbit shoes. He clutched Ghost's teeth knife in one hand and held his knife blank firmly in the other. Then, with much care, he started to step inside. It was times like this that Hansen actually started to miss Wang Yuhang. If the man was there with him, all Hansen would only have to get Wang Yuhang to stand outside the valley and shout. He would probably draw whatever was inside out, and there'd be no need to go inside. Hansen carefully walked into the mist. While the mist had color, he didn't feel anything when it brushed across him. After a few steps, that changed. All of a sudden, he felt horrid. He wanted to go forward, but he was struck in the back. It was a powerful strike, and he staggered forward. Before Hansen was able to stabilize himself, something else came at him again. It got his arm. The creature in the red mist traveled quietly, and actually catching sight of it seemed impossible. Hansen was very fast, but he didn't know where he should move until the attacks had already happened. By the time the strikes came, it was too late to dodge. By the time he moved, he'd already been hit. Luckily, though, Hansen had the Marquis' armor on. It meant the attacks didn't actually hurt him. Hansen ran out of the valley after getting hit again, but the thing inside the mist did not follow. He took a look at what had happened and noticed the scratch marks across his suit. Surprisingly, they weren't very deep. What is it? Xie Qing King and Gu Qi Qing ran up to him to ask. Old Qing is right. There is an Earl creature there. Its speed and power aren't too shabby, and it uses the red mist for cover. It's practically invisible. I got attacked before I even saw it, every time. I was hit a few times, but even then, I wasn't able to catch a glimpse. The red mist might have the added ability of masking the senses, because I wasn't even able to hear its movements, Hansen said. This is bad news. If it's in there, and it won't come out, then we can't fight it. Entering the mist is pointless, even with the armor that you're wearing. Gu Qiqing frowned. It'd be great if there was some way to draw him out, Xie Chain King said. If he dared to come out, he'd have followed either my sword or Han Sr. Gu Qiqing shook her head. It shouldn't be too hard to draw him out, but we'll need the help of a specialist, Hansen said. Wang Yuhang? Xie Chin King and Gu Qiqing had thought about him, too. There is something awfully strange about this valley. There are creatures guarding this place for a reason. I am afraid that something important might be about to happen here. We can't delay this, Gu Qiqing said. I gave Wang Yuhang some xenogenic genes, and after he ate them, he managed to break through. He was able to absorb life geno essences, and after he maxed out, he went to the Alliance. We should be able to bring him here fairly easily. But the people out there know how many people Planet Eclipse currently holds, and the documents are all in files. If someone else shows up, it might be difficult to explain. I have to use the recruitment excuse to bring him here, Hansen said. Then let's go quickly and bring more people over. Planet Eclipse has a lot of resources, so the more people the better. With the small amount of us here, there's not enough to pay the taxes we must pay in a few years, Gu Qiqing said. This is what we can do then. You guys can stay and hunt in the vicinity, just don't go too deep. And also, keep an eye on the valley. I'll be right back, Hansen said that, then returned to base. After returning, Hansen gave Knife Queen a call. Knife Queen knew he'd need more people so she agreed to his request and sent him an airship. After Iceberg Duke picked him up, they left Narrow Moon to recruit. Where would you like to recruit people this time? Iceberg Duke was sounding much friendlier with Hansen now. Hansen had been number one in the Moon God Festival, and he was the very first person to have ever been personally blessed by the Moon God. So, that had certainly boosted his reputation and goodwill. 
Learning teeth knife and teeth powers in such a short time wasn't something that could be accomplished with luck alone. However he had done it, it made Iceberg Duke look at him differently. Chapter 1871 Cave I want to go to Planet Crooked Rock, Hansen told Iceberg Duke. You want to recruit Ghana? Iceberg Duke understood Hans Sin's thought process. Planet Crooked Rock was a place that belonged to the Feathers. The primary race there, however, was the Ghana. They were supposed to be a higher race, but for some reason, the Ghana on that planet had abandoned their people to join the Feathers. Now that the Feathers had fallen, holy heaven had been closed. They could no longer afford to take care of other planets and races. The planet had not been taken over yet, but many different factions were vying for it. Many wanted to claim it. Hansen decided to go to Planet Crooked Rock due to the complications of the races there. Ghana was one of the mainstream races, but there were many others there, as well. Hansen also fancied trying his luck. If he was able to recruit a few of the Ghana, then that wouldn't be too shabby, either. The Ghana were very good at producing medicine from xenogenic genes. They were known as geniuses, and many factions liked the prospect of procuring their special talents. But due to the fact that so many different factions wanted them, the Ghana had yet to decide which they should follow. Not bad. I would like to have some Ghana. If I am unable to procure any, there are those of other races to choose from. Either way, there should be a diverse selection to pick from, Hansen randomly said. You should put your hope into getting those of another race. Don't bother with the Ghana, because our rebate Gold Jade King went to Ghana two months ago and was unable to recruit any. The Ghana were way too popular with other races, Iceberg Duke said. Let's take a look first, anyway. If I am lucky enough, they might be willing to slog through the hard times with me. Hansen made it sound as if he was kidding. He was, actually. He didn't have much hope of recruiting any of the Ghana, and his primary goal was to grab Wang Yuhang under the pretense of recruitment. After he arrived on the planet, he only then noticed how complicated planet Crooked Rock really was. There were many airships and battleships in the area, all belonging to an array of separate factions. They had each come there to try to recruit the Ghana. Seeing how things were on planet Crooked Rock, it was obvious that there were many kings up for grabs. The flying airship Hansen had been on was investigated upon arrival. When they declared themselves to be the rebate, they were granted access to the planet. If they had been a small race of no renown, they probably wouldn't have even been allowed to land on the planet. So, the chances of Hansen meeting up with any of the Ghana to try his luck would have been zero. Iceberg Duke brought Hansen over to meet with Gold Jade King, but they were unable to. It was a Duke that came out to greet them. You are Knife Queen's student, and you are Iceberg Duke. I am sorry, but my master is currently unavailable, and he cannot come to meet with you at this time. He has sent me here to aid you in the meantime. If there is anything you require, do not hesitate to make a request. The Duke certainly sounded polite. Thank you very much. We have come here to recruit some people, actually. I wonder if you have a manifest that notes the different populations that reside on planet Crooked Rock. If you can provide us a copy, we would be most grateful, Hansen said. That is easy. I will certainly make a copy for you. The Duke said this, and then went on to say, Do you two plan on recruiting the Ghana? That would be the best case scenario. Yes, Hansen answered. The Duke smiled. Recruiting the Ghana is no small feat still. You might try your luck. Who knows? You might be fortunate enough to gather a few. Thanks. I appreciate the advice. After Hansen accepted the manifest, he said his goodbyes. You guys are looking to recruit the Ghana? Huh. So naive. Even if the queen herself had come along, I doubt any Ghana would join you. After Hansen left, the duke spoke to himself. After Hansen accepted the information he was given, he allowed Iceberg Duke to go ahead and scope out those of the less significant races. They could try to recruit a few nobles out of those. Judging from the state of things on this planet, though, he thought that it was unlikely he'd procure members of the Ghana. The Ghana were receiving many generous offers from the big factions. There was no reason for them to go to an undeveloped place populated by barons. Hansen walked around alone and he also made sure he wasn't being followed. By his lonesome, he trekked up to a lonely mountain. He found a cave, and after securing it, he teleported back to the sanctuaries. Hansen called Wang Yuhang and told him about going to the Geno universe. Wang Yuhang was very excited by the prospect, and he told Hansen he'd come over right away. The entire alliance was practically Hansen's back garden. 
and the Gardners were the G family. Many factions had learned of the existence of the Geno universe, and many had aspirations of their people getting strong enough to enter and begin building up a place for their families. But none had yet been capable of going. Wang Yuhang had been given Han Sen's xenogenic genes. He had made it to the Alliance as a human, but without Han Sen's guidance, he'd likely die if he left the sanctuary by himself. No one went without Han Sen bringing them. After Han Sen and Wang Yuhang finished talking, Wang Yuhang piloted an aircraft to get to him. Little Han, take me to the Geno universe. I want to see those ladies with cat ears. If they are as hot as you say they are, Wang Yuhang came running into the house all happy. Don't rush. You can see them, but you must know that when I bring you over, you have to listen to me. You cannot do anything by yourself, Hansen said. Sure, I'll listen to your every word. Except for selecting a wife and making babies, of course. Wang Yuhang patted his chest. That is fine. I don't want to get involved with your wife and kids. Hansen then brought Wang Yuhang to Planet Crooked Rock. But Wang Yuhang had not eaten many xenogenic genes. He hadn't been in the Alliance very long, either. He still wouldn't be able to generate Geno armor. So, Hansen knew he'd have to feed the man a lot more genes to produce that, first and foremost. Hansen brought Death Goddess and Dragon Lady Chef along, too. They were able to generate their Geno armors in the cave. Lady Chef had been staying in Hansen's house in the Alliance. She was in charge of the kitchen there so she had been able to nibble away at more xenogenic genes than most of Hans Sen's companions. Death Goddess had eaten quite a bit, too, so she was ready to generate a Geno armor at any point. She could fire arrows on a whim, and so she was quite a scary person to have hanging around the Alliance. When she was staying in Hans Sen's old house, she had fired arrows and toppled a lot of buildings. Hans Sen's new family home was in a city, It'd be bad news if she woke up in a bad mood and decided to go knocking buildings over with a hail of arrows. So, Hansen wanted to bring her to the Geno universe to prevent any unfortunate accidents while he was away. Death Goddess and Lady Chef generated their Geno armor in the cave. Hansen and Wang Yuhang crouched in the cave and kept watch. Suddenly, Hansen heard someone's voice drawing near. Oh, no. Having little uncle here really is bad luck. Dragon Lady and Death Goddess are in the midst of generating their Geno armor. They cannot be disturbed during this process. Hansen frowned as the voice drew nearer and nearer. Chapter 1872, Ghana. You go in there and make sure Dragon Lady and Minger are protected. Hansen spoke to Wang Yuhang at a low volume. Wang Yuhang knew that he was currently weaker than the average commoner in the Geno universe. There was no point hanging around with Hansen so he did as he was instructed and returned to the cave. Hansen was crouching just outside the entrance of the cave. He collected a bunch of vines and grass to conceal himself, while he kept an eye on the local vicinity. Hansen eventually saw two shadows emerging, coming up the path towards the cave. One of them had the upper body of a human and the lower body of a snake. It looked like a female serpent. She moved her body, approaching. Ghana. Hansen was shocked. In such a barren place, catching sight of a Ghana was rather rare. Next to the Ghana was a person with the head of a cow. It was different from the one Hansen had seen before. This one was definitely a female, and its chest had two steel orbs. It looked scary. Hansen perused a summary of the various races that could be seen on planet Crooked Rock. He knew that the one with a cow had belonged to a race called Cow. They were a fairly populous race on this planet. There were so many of them on the planet because they owned a large portion of it. Although the Ghana were in control of the planet, their numbers were lower. It was not uncommon to see a cow as a subordinate of the Ghana, but this seemed to be a little different to the usual. The Ghana was in chains, with her hands clasped tightly in cuffs. The cow behind her had a spear, and it was pointed right at the Ghana's back. It seemed as if the Ghana was a prisoner. Gia, do you have any idea what you're doing? The Ghana woman kept on moving but she looked angry when she spoke. Miss Guna, I know exactly what I am doing. You are worth a lot of money, and after I sell you, I can make a happy life for myself on any planet I select, the cowwoman with a steel chest said. Gia, I had no idea this is the sort of person you were. We raised you up, and we treated you like family. And now this is what you do? You're just going to up and sell me? You are cold-blooded. Guna nibbled her lips as she spoke. Family? Stop pretending that nonsense. You gonna always treat us cow like slaves. We're just something that can produce milk for you. 
We give you everything. And what do we get in return? A compliment? Let me tell you right now, that is worth nothing. Gia gave a cold smile. Duna continued biting her lips, and she did not respond. Gia spoke again, though, saying, And don't you dare play any sort of tricks. If you do, I can guarantee you'll suffer. Who are you selling me to? Duna asked. It does not matter. It's just a race that can pay a generous sum. After that, Gia pushed Guna. Move. Go into that cave for now. The buyer will soon be here. Hansen was still crouched in the vines. He thought he was having quite the stroke of misfortune, learning that the cave was the supposed place of the trade. Hansen didn't say a word. He just erased all traces of his presence and remained shrouded amidst the vines. He clutched the handle of Ghost Teeth Knife, too. When Guna reached the entrance, her beautiful eyes looked to the vines Hansen was hidden beneath. She looked straight at Hansen, and she seemed very surprised. Hansen was shocked, and he thought to himself, very powerful senses, for sure. I hid my presence, yet she can still see me? But Guna kept acting casual and continued moving forward. She behaved as if she had only looked that way without meaning to. She didn't look at Hansen again, but as she approached the cave, she moved closer and closer to him. After a few seconds more, Guna passed right by Hans Senator Hansen, still in the vines, did not move an inch until Gia was also in front of him. Then he leaped forward. With Ghost Teeth Knife, he rushed out and tried to plunge it into her back. Gia was very powerful, though. She could have very well have been an earl. Hansen still couldn't utilize Ghost Teeth Knife's full strength, and as a result, he probably wouldn't have been able to damage her bones. So, he had to take aim and strike at the most tender portions of her body. Without any buffs, Hansen had to use his own strength to activate all of Ghost Teeth Knife's power that he could. Ghost Teeth Knife's blade was like a fong, and it stabbed Gia's waist without remorse. Her hide was thick, though. She wasn't wearing armor, but even so, Hansen was only able to drive 10 centimeters of the blade into her back. Compared to her barrel-thick waist, he had only managed to plunge it in at around 30% of what was necessary. It most certainly wasn't enough. Gia had been ambushed, but despite that, she had no intention of fleeing. The attack seemed to enrage her, and she paid little attention to the wound she had incurred. She lifted the spear in her hand and gave it a hefty swing. Her spear was three meters long, and its shaft was as thick as a man's arm. Its top possessed a flame that strangely resembled the shape of a cow. Its swing was frightening to see, and it looked as if it'd tear the atmosphere in two. Careful. Don't touch the horn power. She is brilliant when it comes to breaking armor. Guna shouted from the cave. Hansen did not plan on fighting. He jumped a few meters back and avoided getting struck by the cow flame. Pang. Gia missed and the rocks beside Hansen were broken by that flame. Missing enraged Gia even further, and she came charging at Hansen for a follow-up. Guna was currently in the cave, and she couldn't run. She was not worried about Gia, as the cow was focused on killing her assailant, Hans Sr. Gia did not think Hansen was the buyer, as the buyer had not been informed of the trade location yet. He couldn't know they were here. If he did indeed belong to the buyer, it made no sense that the buyer would send someone so weak. If someone had the sort of money to buy a Ghana, they were most likely a Duke or Marquise. One of them could kill Gia easily. Gia was confused, but her spear lacked hesitation. The horn powers she wielded came rushing towards Hansen again. Hansen led Gia up to the cave's entrance. He had run too far, and he thought Gia would stop chasing him because of Guna. Hansen was afraid Guna would venture too deep and ruin the leveling up process of Dragon Lady and Minger. Wang Yuhang was also in there, but he was weaker than the lowliest commoner. Even with Guna being chained up, the likelihood of him beating her was next to none. Hansen and Jia were both planning to fight right where they were. Guna saw Hansen, and she was able to determine that he was weak and no greater than a Viscount. She expected that Jia would kill him fairly quickly. So, with a limited amount of time, she pondered how she would best escape where she was. That being said, despite Han Sen's apparent weakness, Guna was able to tell how fast he was. Gia's attacks weren't even able to ruffle his clothes. Chapter 1873, Guna A moment later, Han Sen knew exactly what Gia's power was. He did not hesitate, and he suddenly accelerated when her steel spear approached. The steel spear and the horn power it carried were unable to catch up with him. Hansen flashed past Gia, laying a slash across her neck with his knife. The strike wasn't enough to completely behead her, 
but blood vessels and windpipe were severed. Gia couldn't speak, but she was still active. She swung her steel spear at Hansen again. Hansen sped up and dodged the incoming spear once more. Again, he plunged his knife into Gia's back. Duna was standing in the cave, and she watched Hansen's brutal attacks with an expression of shock. The rebate's teeth power? How? He is not even one of the rebate. How has he managed to use it? Guna dropped into thought. If he really is the buyer, an escape might be pretty difficult. At that speed, he's faster than a Marquise. His power doesn't seem to match that level of speed, though. As Guna pondered all this, Gia dropped her steel spear to the ground and fell over. Her wounds were bleeding profusely, particularly the injuries on her neck. Her neck had been halfway severed, and it had swiftly drained her. She hadn't been able to stay strong. Her windpipe had been sliced in two, so she couldn't even scream. All she could do was twitch on the ground. Hansen then shoved his knife into her heart with ease, due to her inability to resist. He ended her life just like that. Thank you for saving me. The Ghana will repay this debt with generosity. Guna bowed before Hans Sr. And what sort of reward should I expect from you guys? Hansen asked, glancing over Guna. This was his chance. He wanted to use his powers to impress the Ghana so that they might consider joining him. He had previously thought an opportunity like this would be impossible to come by. But now, a chance had miraculously shown up right in front of him. He wasn't going to let this chance pass him by. If he played his cards right, he wagered he could take her to Planet Eclipse. Guna looked at Hansen and thought things might be going from bad to worse. She looked at his face and believed she had met someone who wasn't a good man. Guna smiled and said, There's more of the cow on planet Crooked Rock, and the Ghana are going to be practically helpless soon. If you do not mind, I would like to bring my family along with you someplace. We can follow you, and we can help you. Hansen was surprised, and he observed her facade of sincere gratitude. It made him laugh. Can you take us with you, please? Guna looked serious. I can take you, but only you. Forget about your family. We are poor so we cannot take care of too many people. Hansen smiled. Guna looked very sincere, despite her obvious anxiety. Do not worry. We have a lot of savings, and we can give it all to you. Just promise you can take us somewhere nice. Hansen did not bother talking with Guna anymore. He had seen many evil people in the past, and there were far more out there with worse intentions than Guna. He could tell what sort of person she truly was. Hansen moved up to her then brought out something to tape her mouth shut. Guna's face changed when she saw this, and she hurriedly tried to say, I have a way for you to find many Ghana that would be willing to obey you. Just let me go. Hansen didn't stop, and the tape was drawing close to her mouth. She went on to say, I am the leader's daughter. You will encounter much trouble if you take me with you. And on top of all that, I don't know how to produce medicine. You will have no use for me, take my word for that. If you provide me the chance, I can get five pharmacists for you to take with you safely. Tell me more. Hansen was interested enough to hear more, and he was rather surprised he had met and saved the leader's daughter by mere happenstance. Good, Guna said. You are my savior. If you take me back, my father is sure to provide you with the services of five pharmacists. I'll give you one more chance. Hansen looked at Guna coldly. Guna bit at her lips and said, You can take a video of me and blackmail my father into procuring the services. Just ask for the help of a few, and he is sure to agree. Hansen went ahead and covered her mouth. He picked her up and left the cave, even as she struggled. Hansen wouldn't blackmail a leader of the Ghana. The Ghana were considered kings of the planet, and so it would be quite easy for them to track Hansen down. And if the Ghana did find him, many elites of other races would do their best to save Guna, all in the hopes of earning more of the Ghana's trust. The elites would undoubtedly find themselves summoned like Jade Gold King had been. Hansen just wanted to take her back to Planet Eclipse. There was nothing she or her family could do once she was. There. The Ghana was merely a small race of no renown, and the strongest amongst them was just a single king. They wouldn't dare venture to Narrow Moon. Even if their king went there, it was unlikely he'd come back. The rebate also required pharmacists like the Ghana. It was cruel, yes but it was also the truth. The Ghana were known for their abilities, not their strength. Before Hansen exited the cave, he saw Dragon Lady, Minger, and Wang Yuhang all walking out. Did you guys evolve a second time? Hansen asked Dragon Lady and Minger. They nodded, and it brought Hansen some relief. 
He said, Minger, follow me. Dragon Lady and Uncle can walk together. My ship is to the south, so Dragon Lady can just go and register. I will also invite Uncle. After their discussion, Dragon Lady and Wang Yuhang left first. Guna looked upset, and Hansen thought about how he might sneak her back to the ship. The factions were spying on one another. If he brought one of the Ghana back to the ship, he would look very suspicious. But as Hansen was thinking, Little Invisible showed up. It jumped on Guna's head and then disappeared again. Strangely, Guna disappeared too. She became completely Siru like the creature, and it didn't at all look as if she was standing where she was. Good job, Little Invisible. Hansen was happy, and he hadn't expected the little creature to have that sort of power. Chapter 1874 Gana's Destruction Hansen carried Guna back to the ship and secured a spot for Minger. Hansen had thought Iceberg Duke would be able to collect some nobles during his absence, even if they were merely barons. Things hadn't turned out quite as he'd expected them to, though. Too many factions were there with the desire to recruit the Ghana. They all had the same idea that Hansen did, too. Even if they could not recruit the Ghana, no one wanted to return home empty-handed. Many factions had tried securing the services of a baron, and very few barons would settle for the low aspirations of fledgling factions like Han Sin's. They wanted big groups, and the big groups happily chose them. Even if they wanted to join the rebate, it was far more likely they'd join the Gold Jade King instead. Han Sin had been gone for a long time, but despite that, no barons had been recruited. Not long after, Dragon Lady brought Wang Yuhang along. The workers on the ship were very happy to see a baron come to join them. But Dragon Lady requested that Wang Yuhang go along with her, and if not, she would not lend them her services. If this was another planet at war, barons couldn't make such demands. But in these circumstances, if recruiters did not honor such requests, they wouldn't have much success. Hansen made a speech that allowed them to stay. The workers complied, and the two were led on board. I spurred Duke. It is way too difficult to recruit people here. We should go to another planet. Hansen had Guna in his room, and he didn't fancy staying around any longer than he had to. Okay. I spurred Duke knew this would happen. She had warned Hansen before they even arrived. But instead of rubbing it in, she simply agreed with him. When the ship started to fly off, many airships suddenly started to surround it. Hansen's heart jumped in his chest, and he thought to himself, Did something happen? Did they see me sneak Guna on board? It looks like I can't do bad things and expect to get away with it. I just want her help. It wasn't as if I was going to harm her, though. Karma is biting me back pretty quickly. Hansen kept fretting about potentially being exposed. And if this was the truth, he wondered how he might make it out alive. Hansen saw there were many cow on the airship. So, I spurred Duke went out and spoke to their leader. I spurred Duke. What do they want? Hansen asked after nervously waiting for her to return. Iceberg Duke gave Hansen an invitation, and then she said, I wasn't expecting this, but the Ghana are actually controlled by the cow now. The cow are looking to sell some. So, they have invited us to an auction. Really? How did they manage that? Hansen now knew it wasn't just Guna who had been captured. The whole of the Ghana populace had likely become prisoners. Judging from the current situation, I am afraid only the cow can accomplish this with the Ghana. The other factions could not try, because they were watched. If they struck, others were sure to know, Iceberg Duke said. Those cow are conducting auctions? They really think that after the auction is complete, they can take the money they amassed and leave. Hansen lifted his lip. Maybe they have brain damage? Or maybe they've got a powerful backer? Regardless, this is none of her business. After all, you lack sufficient funds to take part in such an auction. Iceberg Duke knew the state of Hansen's finances. Hansen was practically broke. He hadn't been producing enough xenogenic materials and genes to sell. He had also been taking much of what they collected back to the sanctuary to feed his family and friends. Because of that, he had nothing for the auction. Maybe I should go, just so I can at least learn a thing or two? Hansen thought that if he left now, it would be too obvious. If he was there for the Ghana and didn't even bother showing his face in an auction, his actions might be considered suspicious. If the Ghana had been defeated and were unable to protect themselves, no one would guess Guna was there, and so his secret would be safe. Hansen thought he'd join the auction to at least keep himself from drawing suspicion. Back in his room, Hansen used hidden mode. He wouldn't allow voices or videos to be sent outside his room. 
He also let little invisible jump off of Guna's head. The bed was colorful in the room, and that was where Guna appeared. Her body was cuffed to the bed, and her mouth was gagged. Only her tail could move. Let me go. If anyone finds out that I am here, you will be very dead. Guna looked fairly angry. Let me give you the bad news and the good news. The bad news? Well, all of the Ghana have become prisoners. And tomorrow, they'll all be auctioned off. The good news? You don't have to go to this auction and face slavery. You will become mine, Hansen said. No way. You can't lie to me. Guna's eyes were open wide. No way? Then how did you end up captured by Gia? Hansen brought out his invitation and showed it to her. She was tied up, but her tail was free. With it, she opened the invitation and stared at it with wide eyes that refused to shut. Those traitors. Guna looked even angrier. You are lucky that you aren't being sold off. Follow me and I will treat you well. I promise that you won't face a slave's treatment. Hansen smiled. What do you want from me? Guna looked rather confused as she asked Han Sr. Nothing. I am only here to recruit. You should know the rules of the rebate, though, Hansen said, seeming to switch subjects abruptly. Guna looked at Hansen and asked, You are not a rebate, though. You are an outsider, clearly. I think it is more than rare for an outsider to collect members for a faction. I think there are only a few who do this sort of thing. I don't think you're one of them. Outdated news, lady. I am Knife Queen's student. She's the leader of the Bunny Bunch. Of course I have permission to recruit people here. Hansen smiled, and then went on to say, When I boarded the ship, did you not see the rebate around? Did you not see the respect and politeness they showed me? Knife Queen has taken an outsider for a student? Guna could hardly believe it. Believe it or not, it does not matter to me. After that, Hansen lay down on the bed next to her. What are you doing? Guna was shocked, and she wished to avoid him. But she was tied up on the bed, and she was unable to move. What else would I do aside from sleeping? Hansen was lying on the bed, and he looked at Guna as he spoke. Don't you dare. I would rather kill myself. A shiver ran down Guna's spine when her eyes met with Hansen's stare. She had heard a lot of races outside her own were quite sick. Hansen smiled and grabbed her jaw. Chapter 1875, Ghana's Holy Lady. Don't touch me. I will. I will. Guna was young, and so her body had already started to shake. Hansen stroked her cheek, and he found it to be remarkably soft and smooth. Then, he pulled his fingers back and said, Don't worry. I am not interested in creatures that are unable to stretch their legs. I can't let other people see you, that's all. So, for now, things will have to remain like so. When we're in Narrow Moon, you can sleep wherever you wish to. After that, Hansen closed his eyes and got some sleep. Eventually, upon realizing Hansen really was there to rest, Guna finally felt relief. But that night, Guna found herself unable to get a wink of sleep. She lay awake, thinking about all sorts of things. Everything had happened so quickly. She had been kidnapped by Hansen, while the rest of her family and race were made items for auction. Thinking about her family and her own fate being in the hands of others, Guna started to cry. The next morning, Hansen woke up and saw Guna looking at him with incredibly red eyes. He frowned and said, Why are you looking at me like that? I didn't do anything. Hansen was hoping Guna could be a fine worker for him on Planet Eclipse. He didn't want to kick things off with a sour relationship. Do you really want to recruit me as a member? Guna's eyes could not stop blinking. It looked as if she wanted to see right through Hans Sr. What else would I need you for? I am not interested in xenogeneics. Hansen got up. Ignoring Guna's red eyes as he spoke. Are you going to the auction? Guna asked. Yes. Hansen did not have to hide anything. Guna gritted her teeth and said, Let's trade. If you help me get a Ghana, I will obey you without question. I will diligently work for you in Narrow Moon. That sounds like a fair enough deal, but I don't have the funds. I am only going there for show. I don't plan on buying anything. You know the Ghana are really expensive, don't you? The auction will be nuts. People will be throwing tall stacks of money around. Hansen slumped his shoulders. I have a way. Guna spoke only after receding into thought for a while. Hansen looked at Guna and told her, Tell me, then. If things aren't too complicated, I might be able to take you up on the offer. I spurred Duke and Hansen went to the auction. It was set in a beautiful palace, which was where the Ghana had gone to pray. Now, it had become an auction house to sell Ghana. Seeing the Ghana statue, Hansen sighed and thought to himself, 
It looks like praying to God is useless. The Lord helps those who help themselves, I guess. There were many elites attending the auction, and they were all sitting down at tables. None of them looked weak. Greetings from Icebird and Han Sr. Icebird Duke took Han Sin to meet Gold Jade King. Gold Jade King was a handsome fellow, and his rabbit fur was all gold. He looked very noble, almost like a holy deity. On top of that, Hansen also thought he looked very familiar. Now that he thought about it, the Earl Rebate he had beaten in the Moon God Festival looked remarkably similar. You were Knife Queen's student? Gold Jade King's golden eyes looked at him. Yes. It's good to meet you, sir, Hansen said politely. He didn't want to offend Gold Jade King. If he really wanted to buy the Ghana, he needed Gold Jade King's power to do that and still make it back to Narrow Moon. Hansen and Iceberg Duke's combined power was fairly weak. Even if they secured a Ghana, they could easily be mocked. Gold Jade King nodded and said, Find a seat and sit down. Yes. Hansen and Iceberg Duke answered at the same time, and then they found a table with available seats. There was a space next to Gold Jade King's table, but he did not invite them to sit with him. As a result, they did not. Hansen dipped his finger in a glass of water and used it to write on the table. I spurred Duke, the gold-eared Earl in the Moon Festival. Are they related? I spurred Duke saw it, and also wrote on the table. Gouji is Gold Jade King's seventeenth son. That's not good. If something happens to us here, do you think he'll help us? Hansen felt depressed, hearing this. It is hard to say. Gold Jade King might have many children, but he does love Gouji above the rest. After you defeated Gouji like you did, well, it's not surprising that he's upset about it. It is best, all things considered, that you don't start trouble here. Icebird Duke finished writing. Hansen sighed, and he thought to himself, I don't want to start trouble here, either. But if I don't buy that Ghana, Guna will never obey me. I need to think about this. A few minutes later, the auction hall was full to the brim with people. Many of the cow were busy, occupied with serving the people that had come to the auction. Any of the kings who were present could likely kill each and every cow there so no rules were needed. There was a cow that looked like Gia, and she went up on stage. Hansen could not discern the differences between each cow. To him, they all looked the same. Their chests were like basketballs, and the smallest of them was like a football. Don't they have males? Hansen wondered. After the cow said a few words, they brought out a Ghana that had been wrapped up in chains. After a brief explanation of the Ghana's identity, the bidding began. The kings were worried hoping no one would try to steal it. They let their subordinates call out their bids for them. Quickly, the first Ghana was purchased for a high price. And then, one by one, more of the Ghana were auctioned off. Gold Jade King let the Duke next to him do his bidding, but he was unable to secure one. Hansen felt that something was amiss. The Ghana were being treated like a product, but they looked way too calm. The adults, and even the children, didn't so much as shed a single tear. They calmly allowed themselves to be sold. There was no resistance. And after they were purchased, they quietly stood next to their buyers. Something is wrong. Hansen looked around, but he did not see anything unusual. The next one to be sold was the Holy Lady of the Ghana. While the cow-headed thing made its introduction, a Ghana lady was brought up. When Hansen saw her, he was in absolute shock. The woman looked exactly like Guna. She had a delicate face with white skin. Her waist was extremely slender, and her breasts were mighty and full. She looked just like Guna.